Alan Gear's Alpha Hawks campaign. Um, we've got the entire crew on board today, which is good. Say hello, everyone. Hello, hello. everyone. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, someone had to do it. Uh, when we left the intrepid budget crew last time, they were on a uh, mining platform, a, a atmospheric extraction platform in the planet of Venturi, I think it was, from memory, um, uh, where something very, very uh, strange, nasty had, or, uh, had happened to the original crew. Um, so uh, you guys are in the main uh, common room area of the, uh, of the platform. Uh, you have your, uh, the super ape or the sape that you uh, found uh, with you who uh, is hanging around jazz a bit, uh, possibly because they look similar. Uh, and I'll just uh, remind you that uh, this computer terminal uh, nearby is, um, uh, sorry, is, um, oh, damn it. Playing, um, uh, where is it? It was uh, cartoons backwards while playing a instructional yeah. navigation video audio that, that's right thank you yes you're playing uh cartoons backwards and uh with the audio of an astrogation tutorial um so what do you guys want to do i think there was the door to the southeast in b1 that we hadn't i think we'd already gone through b2 three four five yeah that's where you found those rooms the, yeah that's where you found the safe in b4 and the two crewmen in the uh, freeze fields, one that had failed and the one that was still operating. Uh, that was in B1, I uh, B2, I believe. Uh, sounds right. Um, yeah, so yes, there is an airlock door. Um, and the way things have been working out so far, airlock doors tend to lead to small passages to other modules of the platform. Uh, but yes, there is an, an airlock door in the south what we're calling the southeast wall. Um, do we think that if we cycle the airlock and it's vacuum on the other side that we can close the door fast enough to not be harmed? Well, you could tell that from the, you could tell that from the telltale, couldn't you? Except the telltales don't work. Remember that? Don't they? No, well, the yeah, one yeah. telltale was wrong. Yeah, one out of how many? It only takes two. <laughs> God, you are paranoid. I like my face intact. Thanks. Um, the airlock probably wouldn't. The airlock door probably wouldn't open if if um, if it was vacuum on the other side. Okay. Unless something's gone in really, really wrong. Keyword case, probably. In which case, you guys are well and truly kishnigid, aren't you? Just, just a quick question. These yeah. airlock doors, they don't have like a window, right? Plexiglass, no. glass, transparent no. aluminum, we can't see. No. Okay. No, no. And besides, it wouldn't be vacuum anyway because the outside temperature, the outside pressure is the same as the inside pressure. Remember? Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's just not, be cold. You're, you're not in space, you're in atmosphere. Just happens to be an atmosphere without oxygen. <laughs> That's true. Convenient. Well, yes, it is. But that's why you've got oxygen masks, isn't it? Yep. Um, when we're ready to go, um, Jazz will. J Jazz is happy to take point. Okay. With rifle out. Mm hmm. Well, the only thing that's attacked you so far has been the auto automatic platform defenses. And the robot. That's what I said. <laughs> Isn't that part of the mm. automatic platform defenses? I don't know, is it? Well, was, the well one of them was that. a turret that was shooting grenades at us. And eventually, thank God it wasn't a frag grenade, but eventually you were going to roll and it was going to be a frag grenade. Was I? Okay, if you say so. Oh, they were all non-lethal. It might well not be lethal. I don't know. Oh, the laser blasts are certainly lethal enough. Actually, there's probably a dumb idea to throw frags, yeah. Oh, dear. All right, so what are you going to do, guys? Yeah, so let's go. 
Jazz wanted to go first. Babu, you want to go second? Yeah, I'll be there. All right. So, uh, when you go to cycle the um, the airlock door, um, um, it refuses to cycle, and there's a a, a red um, uh, piece of text comes up on the uh, display. Can I diagnose it as a technician? Uh, yeah. I assume it would be technician and not computer. Yeah. Uh, Is that your short Detect alarm volume? or repair? Uh, detect would probably be better. Yeah, well, according to, according to the uh, display, um, which um, which um, says uh, no radiation, uh, standard oxygen, and minus ten degrees centigrade on the te temperature. Below that, it says um, uh, uh, words to the effect of cannot cycle, uh, cannot cycle airlock um, airlock door ajar. Oh, so that would that would be indication that the door on the other side. Well, certainly not this door. Uh, are okay. these doors um, entirely mechanical, or do they have are they motorized in any way? Oh no, they're they're self closing. I mean, entirely entirely manual is what I meant, actually. Yeah, no, I figured that's what you meant. No, they are they are they 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 they, they, they will close if not held open. I think the doctors can prudently go back to A3. <laughs> <laughs> so something's holding the door open, or something's like jammed the door open on the other side then. Or the a other dead door. sapphire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so unless we want to break through this door, which may be a dumb idea, it's probably a dumb idea. Not necessarily. Maybe someone should go take a look out uh, in FE1. Shouldn't there be a way to override it? Not if the door's locked. I mean, probably you don't get a dead body or something simultaneously, it. but what if you really wanted to? Oh, you could probably you could probably jury it to do that if you wanted to. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll see. Can I? Can I override it? Yeah, that would be a jack. That would be a operate machinery roll. Or open locks? No, it'd be open machi operate machinery roll. Yeah, you reckon? Yep, you can. Uh, you can override that if you wanted to, uh, and um, open the yep. door if you wish. Before yeah, we I do that, do we want to tie someone to a rope and have them <laughs> go out there? And EF1. I would rather go this way. Even if you somehow, I don't know, do something really dumb by doing that? Uh, both ways are dangerous, I think, this way. Okay. I, I suspect there's probably just a dead body in the other door. Maybe we, hey, we, we, we know we take core damage. This way, we may not. All right, Dave, you are, you got in this door or not? Yes. Loke right. is going to keep sure. that door, that airlock door open and stand in it. Yeah, if you want. Jazz will be right at the door that Ceres is opening, rifle ready. Okay. Um, that's what you can see. Yes, the door is held ajar, and it looks like there's a chair. Um, being jammed between the door and the and, and it's and it's jam, do, door jam, uh, which is holding the door open. One of those, you know, one of the plastic chairs. Yep. It's on its side, by the way. It's it's, it's not standing up. It's it's like you know, fallen or being placed that way. Either way. Uh, you can also hear um, hear um, some something or some things. Moving around down the uh, in the room beyond. Uh, 
And that's uh, why we brought our amoeba. <laughs> I'd be insulted at that if I were you, Babu. Why? Well, they always you like talking about me. Fair enough. So, so we're going to push Babu in front of us I'm and here. say, uh, Go look around that corner now. And then right. yell out and say that we're the backup crew. We're here to rescue you. All right. So you're going down to the down to the, where the chair is, are you? Um, Babu. Yeah. Okay. Let me draw this in. Just add up. Hang on a sec. Let me bring that out of the way. I'll probably try to keep towards that left-hand side wall, and uh, that is a corner pier around it without exposing too much. So it's hard to draw with a bloody trackball. Okay. Um, as you poke your head around the door, around the corner of the door, you see uh, five safes um, uh, in area C1. Um, quick glance tells you that there are two males and three females. You going Jazz, into the room? Or? What are they doing? Um, watching cartoons? No, not watching cartoons. No, they seem to be wandering around. Um, yeah. Acting what appears to be normal or agitated? Uh, a little bit listless, actually. I'll let everybody know what I see over the uh polyvox over the yeah, micro yeah. Um, comms, yeah. Maybe we should send Jazz up I to Babu. Before I get in there at least I'd like to have at least Jazz up there to back me up if not uh Well, I would say Jazz with his new youngin. This might be Well he ain't that young. <laughs> <laughs> He's not well, he'll either be welcomed or them off, eating what they're doing. All right. Well, Jazz will will beckon to you, Ta. Uh, Jazz will will point the rifle down. He'll keep it in his hands, but it won't be raised or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. He'll beckon over you, Ta, and um, assuming you, Ta, will follow Jazz. Uh, we'll go around the corner, and then Jazz will say, "Hey." Uh, okay. The when you do that. Um, all five of the shapes in the uh, in the room um, behave start to begin to behave very aggressively towards you. Um, they're poly they're grunting and and speaking in their own language, which their polyvoxes uh, translate uh, as "kill no furs," uh, "go hate," things like this at you. Kill what? What was it that said? Kill, kill no furs. No furs. Mm -hmm. But he has fur. I'm just oh, saying no furs. No furs. Mm -hmm. uh, um, did Utah follow me? Is Utah like visible to them? Uh, not yet. Okay, Jazz will back up and push Utah out in front. Okay. Um, uh, a couple of the uh, the, the two males, uh, the, the females seem uh, seem uh, glad uh, and glad to uh, glad to see you, Tar, and um, uh, beckon beckon him forward. The males the males cautiously move forward and drag him uh, drag him into the, the drag him back into the room away from you lot, um, and they uh, and a couple of the females start you know typical. Um, pr uh, uh, preening activities, you know, checking if he's all right, that type of thing. Um, all right. And then Jazz will appeal to, uh, you know, universal language of food and then say, I'm a friend. You guys hungry? We have, hungry! Uh, we hungry! Have, we have hungry! 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 That gets a re immediate reaction. All right, guys, they're hungry. <laughs> no fish. Uh, we, got we, got we got lots of fish. Um, 
I don't remember which room was the uh, the food replicator thing. Right there. Yeah. Nope, or, that's okay. the terminal. That's the terminal. Right there. Right there. Fish so I'm gonna like. Either. Yeah, I'm gonna tell everyone to back up, and then I'm gonna tell the shapes like, "Come, food," and then I'll keep my distance, but basically lead them back. Assuming everything goes well, lead them back to the terminal. I'll go to the terminal. I'll activate it so it has some food, and then I'll back away. Let them let them grab it themselves. Oh, they're they're quite used to using a food terminal. Um, oh. They they're not too pleased with what the, with what the food terminal dispenses, but they do uh, they do start to they they, they do eat. The, the smoked fish, um, although it's obviously obvious that they would prefer something else. Um, but that seems to have calmed them down somewhat. But they're still not very happy. They're still they're still. Ah, um, oh, best way of saying it, they're still pissed off at you. They're not. They're not, they're, they're just not quite as pissed off as they were. I'll uh, say, so what happened? No food. Oh well, we fixed that for you. More food. Uh, where's Where's all your friends? All here. Uh, then I'll say, we're here to help. Make Bring sure food. food. Proper food. Real food. Uh, the terminal can produce other types of food as long as it's operating correctly, right? Correct. Correct. Listen, okay. while you guys why you guys ponder that, I need to uh, hit the head. So I'll give you five. Yep, cheers. I'll be, see you. I'll be back back in five. I had a voice saying like a straight no, a hard no to like you can't get that better food. I think it's just a matter of telling them that, you know, you help us, we'll help you, uh, we'll fix it so that it just that it creates the the food that you want, <laughs> not smoked yeah. fish with raspberry sauce. I wouldn't say, yeah, it's broken and we can't fix it, because that will make them upset. Instead, it's broken and we can fix it with your help. You know, something more along the lines of that. Yeah. Just because I think that saying, ah, oh, shucks, we can't give you the food you want is going to not be fun. Yeah. We need their help to fix it. And maybe Babu can do some more of his psycho babble. Um, uh, can you remind me, because I don't remember from, from the video, room F1, what happened there? Was it just like a hull breach? Yeah, it's a hull breach. It's super cold in there. Yeah, so oh, that door that looks open was we forced shut and there was really strong winds blowing through there making it really cold making the room cold and uh yeah there was the hole there's been something happened to it okay, but it's a it. storage room with um building supplies and electrical supplies and so forth and the, and some of the containers that we need to salvage yep
Okay, I'm back. Anybody else here? I think Paul's still yeah, in there, but... That's okay. I'll wait for Paul to come back then. Anyway, so Utah seems to be seems to be a lot happier. Actually, Babu, do you want to give me a um, um, all right, what would be what would be more appropriate here? What am I trying to do? Um, probably an empathy role is probably the best bet. That's kind of what I was thinking. Wrong one. <laughs> yeah, look, what you're getting is that the sapes um, are angry, resentful. Um, you, if you had to have a guess, it's probably because something's gone wrong with the food supply since whatever's gone wrong with the platforms happened, you know. And I suppose uh, the uh, helpers have gone away and not provided for them. Yeah, yeah. Um, basic, uh, doc, the doc will tell you that the basic biology probably indicates that the sapes should eat twice as much as you guys would in terms of, um, in terms of food. Um, and on that line, Cerise and that, uh, the Cerise and Vogue and Cat even, maybe, uh, but certainly the technicians would tell you that the food supply out of the food dispenser in in where you are now is not going to be enough to feed everybody. Um, especially at the rate of if the sapes eat twice as much because uh, six sapes, six of you guys, that's effectively 18 people. There's not enough. This, the, the the food the food dispenser won't supply all that. Um, of course, the other logical thing to think about would be that um, you seriously doubt that the crew would be getting the sapes to eat in here. So there's probably another food dispenser somewhere. Yeah. So can I'll go? Cerise will go in to see one. I don't know mm -hmm. what's in there. Uh, well, there were five sapes. Um, Look, um, um, and by the way, having fed the state, while they still might be resentful, they're certainly more likely to, uh, to obey orders now, by the way. Um, it's uh, got two computer terminals, uh, computer terminals three and five. That's what the circles are, just so I've mentioned that. Um, there is a labelled inspection cover over near terminal three. Um it's, this is a standard machine tool room. It's got lathes, it's got benches, other gear normally found in a small maintenance workshop. Um, it's actually well enough that any techie repairs uh, or any repairs at all um, with, the appropriate, uh, with the appropriate skills would be classed as not being done in the field, which means um, there's anything repaired in the machine shop would be would not have a chance of breaking down as per the repair in the field rules of the main rule book right mm. oh by the way did anyone know the website to back up sorry i rephrase that everyone knows the basic website to back up i've still got to get the star frontiers one done yeah i was gonna say i still get 404 at star frontiers yeah yeah that's because it's still down. Uh, but the basic website's back up. I had a bit of, I figured out, what, did, I, did I tell everybody what the problem was? I did, didn't I? I sent an email out. Yeah. 
Yeah. Dyslexia, I've got to love it. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't comment on that, Dan, actually. No. Uh, so, yeah, it's a machine shop, basically. Um, there are two doors, three doors, two doors and, a, and another airlock. Um, uh, yeah. By the way, it wasn't near Terminal 3, it was near Terminal 5 that, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that um, cover, the labelled cover. And so, yeah, I'll look in there. Uh, well, the cover, the, the cover's closed, and uh, but it, um, yeah, labelled on the front of it, it's got, um, let, me let me type it, because it's probably the best way to do it, so keep an eye on the chat box. Is what's on the co is what's on the cover, is what's on the uh, door cover, whatever you want to call it. But it's obviously it's it's obviously an inspection cover of some sort. Okay. Are these computers running? Sorry, what was I got the JMT? What was the other bit? Are the computers yeah. running? Well, you'd want to hope so, otherwise you guys are not getting off the platform. <laughs> uh, they have to be running. Life support's running. Now, uh, which terminal is that one, mate? Five. All right. I have to ask. Terminal five. Where is terminal five? Uh, that uh, gets you into the communications computer. Uh, sorry, it gets you into the general computer. That's a level one computer. Oh, yeah. Um, which obviously you've made because you've critically critically succeeded. Um, what do you want to do on that? What do you want to do on that on that computer? Uh, I mean figure out what this uh, inspection, this little instrument thing is, and what information there is. All right. Well, that, well, you obviously have to display info role for the first one, isn't it? For the okay, that's got a communication one program and an info storage two program. Okay, uh, what's in the info storage program? Uh, it's another display info role then, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> can't can't trick you, can I? Um, give me a second. Oh, give me a break. Ah, oh, here we go. Um. Um, jail. No, it's not. It's, what did I say? Jail, did I? Mm, MT. JMT. JMT. No, it's a jail computer. That's the one you're connected to. Which is interesting because that's not the one next door. <laughs> uh, hang on a sec. Just, sorry. God, that's, yeah, okay, that's fine. It's, oh, no, that makes sense. Um, so um, the, info, uh, the info storage program uh, contains uh, the platform library of uh, e-books and um, recordings and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but... 
um, there's no file index. As in, the, it's, it could have been corrupted? Uh, you'll have to give me a, a, um, a programming role for that one, mate. Jesus, you're rolling well today, aren't you? Um, there, yeah, it looks like there's a bug in the in the indexing routines. Um, the upshot is, unless you know the name of the file you're after, you won't be able to access it. There's no other way of accessing it apart from the file name, and you don't have the file name because the indexing system is. Bug, bug, buggy, <laughs> buggy. Okay. Okay. Uh, what's the communications program linked up to? Um, that uh, it controls. Hang on, let me just read this real quick. Uh, be, 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 be. Um, it um, obviously controls uh, the intercom and radio communications for the station um, and also uh, provides um, distributed access to the information in the information storage program, i.e. It's the, it's the program responsible for sending the backwards running cartoons to Terminal 6. Yeah. And possibly elsewhere. For all you know. <laughs> hmm. I'll pass this information on and say, do we want to make an announcement or do we want to keep secret still? Because uh, it could be useful if we uh, aren't presuming that there are bad things on board. Um, but uh, with that, uh, sh she'll go over to Terminal 3 and have a look as well. All right. Well, um, Terminal 3 is the uh, JMT, JMT maintenance computer. It's a level 2 computer. Mm -hmm. uh, just before you do anything else, just hold for a sec. Because I just noticed something. In Okay, yep, when you're ready. So what do you want to do about it? I uh, just list its functions first, which I thought Explain. the operate did. No, the operate, operate gets you into it. You've got to, still got to list it. There we go. Um, it's got a computer lockout program on it. Um, it looks like a lockout three, a level three lockout. Uh, in other words, it's displaying a password on the screen. Oh, yeah. Um... Level three, huh? Mm -hmm. But you should have the password. That should have been in the in the info dump you got from the shuttle. Theoretically, yeah, you Theoretically. can try those. They didn't work before. Where is it? It's in story, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, so cat will enter twenty three eleven zero seven. Then um, the computer uh, goes through its uh, the program. The program goes through its um, its uh, cycle as you would expect, um, and then uh, resets itself back to um, the log on screen, which is unusual. That's not normally what happens with these lockouts. They either let you in or they tell you straight away password. You know, uh, password um, not explicable. Uh, computer repair? As in try and figure out what's wrong with it. Oh, um, you look, um, based on what you've seen so far and what you, uh, with the other things, you, there looks like there's some sort of bug in it, bug in the, so in the software. Would be your best guess, best guess at this stage. Okay. Cool, cool. I'll relay that information and say we probably, unless we want to make an announcement, that's probably all we're going to get out of these computers. 
for now. Mm -hmm. uh, with with uh, um, Terminal 5, was there any log of what files were being accessed? Uh, that's an info, that's an info, display info role, mate. You've already made the operation. Um, no, um, there's no, there's no, uh, no log at all in that, in terms of what's been accessed or when it was last accessed. Um, again, you, with that piece of information, you probably suspect that maybe that be, may be part of the indexing system as well. Yeah. Cool. But there's something not right, obviously. Yeah, about a lot of the electronic things, yeah. Yeah, everything has been bugged so far. Mm, well, that's that's what your experts are telling you. Well, and the so, rolling robot, that one was corrupted. Yeah, but that was back on the sh that was back on the on the money spider. Mm -hmm. It wasn't here on the platform. Okay. Yeah, probably time to uh, charge onto the Azala doors. Mm -hmm. Oh, one other thing, um, the um, um, from Terminal Three. Not only can you access the JMT system, but you can also access the J the JGL system as well. <coughs> Pardon me, sorry. How would I know that if it was all blocked? Ah, because you had the option um, uh, when you were set, uh, when the um, logon screen uh, reset itself. Ah, yeah. Um, it came back with it came back with um, logon logon JMT or access JGL. Okay, then I may as well try and log on to JGL with sixty four eighty eight forty three. Uh, well, you back. There was no password on. Um, the JGL computer, so you're in. Oh, that's weird. Oh, not necessarily. Um, if the if the JGL is a general computer. Yeah. You know, um, the idea being everybody on the station should be able to access. You know, maybe, maybe that's why. Yeah. Um, but a maintenance computer. You can see why that would be password protected. Yeah. Or protected, I should say, computer security is protected. So yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, communications level one and information storage level two are the two programs on the JGL. And is that the same? So is that the same computer as five, or is that a different? Yeah, one? no, it's a JGL. Terminal five connects to the JGL, and terminal three connects to the JGL and the JMT. Gotcha. On which yeah, way you yeah. want to go? Yeah. Cool. 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 Right. So I know it's a I know it's a tangent, but we found the two bodies, right? Did we identify them? Are they Alpha, Beta team, etc.? Um, I believe you think you've identified them. Yes, okay. they um, are. The dead one is Deed Fengal, and the live one is Hall Sinclair. I believe they are both from T. <clears throat> team Alpha. Thank you. Yep. Team yeah. Alpha was the one that was on station when things went wrong. Yeah, there was some of the some of the team leader and some of the money spider crew that uh, attempted the rescue mission in the other shuttle and haven't been heard of for days. Yeah. So yeah. So we found two of the four original crew. Yes. One's alive, for the moment. Right, and the computer operator was missing. Uh, well, you've found two of them, two of the four, so far. Now, I need to tell you something, um, since you've been here for a while now. That door is ajar, and that door is also ajar. Um, they, open to, they open away from you, but towards each other. So the, the easternmost one swings to the west, and the westernmost one swings to the east. Does that make sense? Yeah, so they both meet down that line. Yeah, but going the other way. They open away from you, so the head of the arrows right, ran the wrong way. But yeah, yeah basically I know, down that line. Now, just making sure you do because you know. 
I'm being pedantic, I suppose, but there you go. Um, so, uh, yes, so um, why, 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 God, I'm getting tongue tied today, sorry. While Cat is mucking around with the two terminals and the computers they're connecting to, what's everybody else doing? Have we tried fixing the food machine yet? I uh, no, you haven't. Okay, I guess while Cat's been doing that, I'll take a look at the food machine. All right. Well, give me a uh, give me a repair roll. Look, as far as you're concerned, the machine's working perfectly. Uh, the machine mechanically electronically is working a okay your guess is as most hardware people would say it's a software problem <laughs> ah. most most software engineers would say it's a hardware problem um now look you, you, you from what you can see it appears i mean you spend a, you spend a, you know several tens of minutes doing this there's nothing wrong with it it's working perfectly fine uh, from a mecha from a mechanical electronic point of view which leads you to believe it's a software issue. Yeah, that's what we were thinking originally, I believe. I believe. Well, that's another yeah, thing would, for Kat um... to do. Well, my question to you before you go on, sorry, is one, uh, what are you doing about the chair in the um, door jam of the airlock? And two, are you going to fix the airlock? Now that you know what the cause of the problem is. Yeah, yeah, we'll remove the chair. All right. Well, what about the door at the far end, at the at the B end, the B door, as opposed to the C door? Remove the uh, override. You, did we break it or just override it? You override it, but it'll need bring. It'll need to be repaired, and a repair roll will need to be made. It'll need to be repaired to put it back in the work, proper working order. Okay, so I'll repair it. Okay, give me a repair roll, man. Yep, no problem at all. There we go. Okay, so uh, the BC airlock is working a okay. Okay. Again, now. Now, my, now that it is working okay, where are the safes? Uh, I think they were eating in B. And that's right. At last they were until until folks started uh, repairing the um, or investigating the repair of the food terminal. Um, real food. Uh, is uh, what one of the safes says to you folks. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to tell, but it was a question. Real food soon. Mm, real food. So, uh, so you know, wants to check out the other doors. Sure, which one do you want to go to first? Uh, not the airlock. Uh, I guess yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that one? That one there? Okay, uh, yeah, let me just draw that in for you. Uh, the door, you'll see it in a second. Hang on a sec. Where are we? Um, that one. Um, it's that door, that door in there, the one to the west is also, or southwest, is also slightly ajar. Okay, I'll go. Okay. I assume there's nothing dangerous because the safes had access, so. Just want to check out all these rooms. Yeah, it's probably a smart move. Um, where are we? Um, oh, by the way, uh, when you open the inner door, um, you get hit with a um a very musky animal smell. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's it's rather pungent, actually. Um, there's a gap. By the way, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there, there's a gap in the wall. Shit. Ah, there. Um, and there's a corridor leading down that, which I haven't bothered drawing in yet. Um, there is also, if you turn that arrow basically around, there's a uh, large -er food dispenser. Uh, it's got larger buttons. It's got a larger dispensing slot and it's it's about 50% larger than the one in B1 So were they just not able to open that door? Well, the doors were ajar. Okay.
So yeah. Um. So what do you want to do, guys? So what was what's the arrow pointing to at C two? A gap. A gap in the wall. Okay. So I'll go in. Okay. Um. Inside there are six. Um. For what? Oh, hang on. Whoops. For want of a better term. Uh, pens. Um, um, they're a bit mucky. <laughs> um, um, each of those pens contains what could be loosely described as a bed of green artificial fibre. Okay. Yeah, I mean, just a, a quick look that there's nothing of interest, no things out of place. You know, uh, no grenade well, apart, launchers under. No, yeah. no, no, no grenade launchers. Um, so apart from apart from being uh, apart from needing needing a good clean out, a good mucking out, um, no, there's no, nothing nothing of interest apart from I said the um, the oversized food dispenser. And mm -hmm. is it try the food dispenser? Um, yeah, um, it there's uh, there's no choice. There's no selection choice. Um, there's simply a dispense button, effectively, um, and it dis it dispenses um, a um, thick gruel. I suppose the best way of saying it. Um, it it's it's quite uh, a bit like porridge. A bit like hot porridge, um, and there's quite a bit of it. Um, there's actually probably enough for two, two people. Like it's it's it's, it's a double meal. It looks like double sized meal, of. I'll let, I'll let everybody stuff. know that there's a safe food dispenser here, but I don't know if this is their preferred food. Well, why don't we bring it to them and see if it is? <gasps> real food, real food. Yeah, Voke will go and have like one of either Jazz or Babu come with, bring the bowl of porridge and see if they take interest. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's their preferred stuff. It's it, that's the what they call real food. Okay, um, then we can lead them back to the dispenser. No work. It doesn't dispense again. Uh, are you trying to dispense it again? Yep. Well, just give me, just give me a second. Um, yeah, it worked a second time. So it works for me, but it doesn't work when they press it. I, I, I'm not saying that at all. I'm simply saying. Well, ask them. Um, ask them to press it. All right. Well, um, Utah wanders up and pushes the button, and. Uh, gets dispensed um, um, a, 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 a disposable container of, of of what you're calling porridge and he seems quite happy and tucks in. <laughs> See, uh, well, that's half the apes fed. Uh, like, oh. like no fur. I'll do a repair roll just to see if there's anything wrong with it. Sure. I don't know. Yeah, look, no, nah, you, you've got no idea. From what you can tell, it's, it's A-OK. -okay. I mean, some, someone else can do the same thing if they want as a backup. All right, I'm, I'm still off on a tangent, if you don't mind. So That's I'd right. like to ask, um, it's about sure. the garbled subspace transmission. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I need to, I need to pull that up myself. Uh, yep, just to remind myself. Uh, yep, go. What do you want to know? So, do we know who uh, sent the message? Um, well, probably not Archon because she's mentioned. Um, but um, it it's was a male or female voice. Yeah, yeah. I'm just looking for that myself now. Uh, okay, thank you. That's all right, because I've got it spread over several bits and pieces here. Uh, that's the map. Not, I don't want the maps. I want the story box. Story box. 
Um, bum, 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 bum. Uh, that, if you had to guess, um, it was a female. It's got a female tone to it. Um, yeah, and again, if you had to guess, you'd say it was Xerian. Okay, thank you. Um, but that's a guess on your part. Okay. So um, the um, three remaining shapes uh, shuffle up to the food dispenser. Um, and um, all but the last one gets food. The last one does not get food. It happens to be one of the males. And he starts getting quite agitated. No food. Want food. If I push it, does it give it food? Nope. What about if Jazz pushes it? Nope. He's getting rather agitated. Babs, you might want to try a persuasion roll here to keep this guy calm. Yeah, you may. He's not. He's very unhappy, but he's not. He, you doubt he'll attack anyone in his frustrations. But he happens to be. He's, he's probably the alpha because he's the biggest, biggest of the lot. Um, and obviously. He's let everybody else eat first, so he's not just an animal alpha. He's a, actually a leader alpha. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Um, so, um, so yeah. So um, I don't know what you guys want to do, but he's 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 disappointed. Um, he's frustrated. No work. So this so, dispenser seems to be kind of working sometimes and not working other times, right? Is there is there any any way you can figure out whether the dispenser is, I don't know, the, well, again, Vogue, is it the software problem? Well, uh, Vogue tried and he couldn't tell. And uh, so that was, uh, unless somebody else with technician skill wants to try a uh, repair role to see what's going on. Yeah, I'll try. I mean, Kat should probably look at the computer side of it. Well, um, from a from a technical mechanical electronic point of view, the the, the system seems to be working fine, um, which again would lead you to indi which leads you to suspect it's a software issue. Um, I don't know if you're online or not, Cat. The usual. There's the a bug. Usual. Unexplained <laughs> bug. Unexplained. Um, well, they, it's hard to trace back, but that type of thing would be normally controlled by a life support system computer yeah and the life That's support right. system is keeping the place at minus 10 degrees remember so you know it's yeah yeah it's probably a bug of some sort yeah and we haven't found the life support computer yet so yeah no we're... you haven't unless, so it was terminal, about... unless it was on terminal six but you couldn't get to past the cartoons on terminal six remember yeah so um how about tell suggest to him that he has fish for now and we'll try to fix this <laughs> Not happy. I'm just going to th throw this out for everyone's consideration. Uh, of the four team members, the comp operator is missing, but was mentioned in the in the in the message. And the safe handler is the other one who's missing. Uh, no, hang on. Uh, comp. Sorry, did you say com or computer? Communications or computer? computer? Sorry, yes, that's correct. So the comp, mm -hmm. the, the the computer operator and the safe handler are the two that are missing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we've got a computer problem. Yes, we certainly do. Food for thought. Food for safe. We've also got a safe problem, kind of. You could have, yeah, if you're not if you don't handle it properly. Well, let's try the other door. Okay. Um, let me just draw, yep, I knew which one you meant. Let me draw that in for you. The worst part about this is the damn map's on an angle, so I can't just draw squares, rectangles, like you can yeah. very easily with this. You know, I've got to draw it freehand, which is a pain in the butt. Um, 
again, uh, it's min again, it's minus 10 Celsius standard oxygen, no radiation as far as you can see. Your, obviously, your, your um, um, toxic red gauges are uh, agreeing, basically, with that. Um, it appears it's a cabin. It's very much like the cabin, cabin B two, three, and four, uh, in the B module. Um, however, um, a lot of stuff's been broken. A lot of the smaller items seem to have been broken. Um, the locker is open, um, and there's debris across the floor. Um, there's also bones scattered in amongst the debris. Humanoid-sized bones or chicken uh, that, bones? No, no, uh, not chicken bones. No, these these are larger bones. Um, the doc could probably tell you if he wants to give me a um, a roll, a logic roll. Sure. Big bones. Damn bones, damn bones, damn. I've forgotten. <laughs> Sorry, hang on. Uh, they're human. Actually, no, they're actually not. They're actually Yazirian bones. Oh, the same handler was a Yazirian. Yep, FYI. that's not good. Um, can you what? N never mind, go ahead. Uh, well, depending, depending on what I'm about to say, it might depend on what you're about to say. So you go first. Uh, well, I was thinking about somehow trying to identify the the, the bones, but I, I'm not going to be able to do that. But maybe I can find out how old they are. Yeah, that's what I thought you were going. That's why I held held my, held my fire. Um, okay, look, thank um, you for holding. That's all right. Um, they're um, not that. I mean, in terms of old, they're not old. They're pretty fresh. Um, there are marks on some of the bones indicating that they've been chewed upon. I suggest mm. someone ask our friendly <laughs> friendlies here whether they uh, enjoyed a snack. Is someone going to do that? Jazz. Jazz will ask. <laughs> Jazz will ask. Absolutely. What are you saying? Uh, what are you saying? What are you saying, Jazz? Please. Jazz say so. Who was uh, who was that? Uh, they look they, they look a little bit sheepish. Uh, but one of them, one of them volunteers, uh, attack. Um, do we remember, anyone remember, I don't remember the name of the safe handler. It's, in the, it's in the shuttle dump. It's in the shuttle dump info in the, in the story box, mate. Right. I've also got an ongoing thing. I'm called Jepsum notes. Yeah. So there's several ways. Of, yeah. Um, okay. Okay, and what did they say? They said... Atta. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that'd be the name of the handler. Probably. Um, ja Jazz will say to them... Um, uh, right, right before you do that, can I... Just, sorry to interrupt, but can I get both Doc and Babu to make me logic rolls, please? Okay. Doc... You surmise that um, because the sapes were so hungry um, that they probably ate um, the poor sape handler. Um, but from what you know of them so far, you don't think they necessarily killed him. They might have done. Uh, unfortunately, Babu, you've got no opinion one way or the other at this stage. Do apes eat dead things? Um, well, they're, they're apes. They're apes, so apes are omnivores. Um, I don't know if they eat dead things, though. Well, not like they a may. Vulture. No, they're not. Ca they're, they're not. Apes generally aren't carrion eaters, as a general rule. But there have been reported cases of. Um, uh, I mean, usually most apes, chimpanzees, uh, bonobos, orangutans, gorillas, um, primarily vegetarian, but they'll eat bugs and grubs and things like right. that. 
and the room is cold enough and um, they were hungry, so. Yeah, so it's possible they could have eaten the cow. I mean, if they were hungry enough, they probably would have. Um, as I said, Babu, I, I, I can't give you any more information because Babu didn't make his role. Um, but it was a psychological role I was after, in case you were wondering. So if we're um, assuming that's a Tata, that leaves only the Vrusk as the remaining unknown. Um, yeah, only one unaccounted for. Um, but I'll tell you what, the bones, uh, the bones have not been cracked open and the marrow hasn't been sucked out, uh, which is typical uh, carrion eating behaviour. Um, that has not happened, which again would lead you to believe that you know, the, you know, the, the, the bones don't appear to be damaged in terms of a scuffle or, or the skull's not cracked in or anything else like that. The bones have just been chewed on. Okay? Which is a rather horrible way to go, I suppose. Unless they were already dead. Well, that's it. They probably were. It probably were. Probably were. Or he probably was already dead. Which brings up what the hell killed him. Kaz will ask, uh, how, well, Kaz will say, seeing that they're looking to keep this, we'll say, you ate, <laughs> you ate a tata. It's okay. You're hungry. What happened to a tata? What killed him? Don't know. Friend. Mm -hmm. But we hungry. Yeah, it's okay. Maybe find out who propped open all the doors. Oh, did I think the trainer propped prop open the doors, or did the safes? Which doors? The 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 airlock door, or just the regular doors? The, yeah, the doors that have the, the the things from preventing them from closing. I'm sort of pumping jazz to ask. Oh, you mean the you mean the um, the airlock door? Yeah, there's there's stuff that's been put in the. Yeah, there was a chair. There was a chair in the in the airlock door round about there. Was mm -hmm. moved it now, and the door's now closed. Oh, jazz will ask. Uh, how did the chair get there? Uh, no, understand. Uh, who put the chair in the door? No one. Chair fell. Apparently the chair fell. <laughs> um, can we um, well, hang on, hang on, just before you go on. It's a fair distance from where you'd expect the chairs to be. You expect the chairs to be in front of terminals three and five. Now it's two meters a square, so you know it's a little bit, it's a little bit inconsistent, don't you think? Yeah, I suppose. But anyone else want to ask anything about the chair? Ask them about the um, the other two doors then. Three doors. Yeah, the other door. Yeah. It's the those the other doors are manually closing doors. They're not they're not um, automatic. So the fact that they are ajar probably means the safes are in there. In fact, you can almost guarantee the safes were in were in C three. And obviously C two is where they live. So. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. Okay, I get it. So the food dispensers stopped dispensing food, so then they thought it was broken, broken. Possibly. I can't answer for the safe. I don't, I'm not a safe. <laughs> I just play one in a bi weekly game of Darfur. <laughs> Again, I'm just want to confirm is this, is this yeah, uh, sure. Yazirian victim here appear to be male or female? Um, you're going to have, hang on, let me find the right skill for you, because that's, that's, um, 
I reckon you're going to have to give me a major surgery role as part of a, in, a an autopsy slash investigation type deal. Um, okay, I guess we'll embark on that then. Okay. Well, he has, there is a autopsy one, right? Is there? I didn't think there was. Yeah, perform autopsy medical. Oh, so there is. Didn't see that one. Yeah, okay. Um, look, based on the pelvis, um, um, you sus it, it's a male pelvis is what you suspect, was what you're pretty sure of. Because um, I don't know if anyone knows that much about physiology, but male pelvises tend to be slightly different from female pelvises in humans, and yeah. therefore in um, something like a, uh, a usurian would be yeah, very similar. Yeah, usurians are just also much heavier. Males are heavier, right? So. Yeah, um, again, and again, uh, based, on, based, on, based on the pelvis, based on the, on the, the spine and, and the long bones, they seem to be, he they seem to be rather heavy. I mean, it's, it, again, it's, you get one of those Russian weightlifting women, they'd have bones like a man, um, apart from the pelvis. Um, in, but that, that's, not a, that's not, I mean, that's at one end of the, one end of the scale, you know, I and mean, that's not a typical thing. Just give me a split second, guys, I've got to put the aircon on. So again, the garbled, mesh, the garbled message um, uh, applies to the computer operator, um, and it's the leader apparently l left the message that can't find her. So I think we've got a missing computer operator somewhere, Brusk. Uh, Wonder how you need a Brusk. Crack open the shell and eat him like a lobster, maybe. Probably. Sorry, Sharice. <laughs> Just no. an, idle, well. an, an idle thought. Um, you're lucky that faith handler wasn't a wasn't a uh, wasn't a drowler site. There'd be nothing left. Well, they might not have eaten. Maybe you never know. So yes. Um, so um, so that's what you. So I'm assuming I'm assuming a lot of this took place in parallel, like. Um, Cat was doing the computers, and and Voke was looking at the food dispenser, and you guys were doing. Do you want to do? Uh, 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 did somebody say they were going to search C three or not? I can't remember. Ah uh, yes. Um. Oh, give me a search roll in, please. Okay. Um. Yeah, you do manage to find some stuff worth salvaging amongst the debris. Um, you find um, a medikit, um, but um, it's obvious that a lot of the contents have been broken. Um, um, so apart from, there's a can of plastic flesh. Um, you, there's ten recoverable recoverable doses of biocourt and five recoverable doses of antitox. Apart from that, she's pretty stuffed. I'll uh, <laughs> give it to Doc or Jazz. You want to note those down, boys? You going to yeah, take okay, that? I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. Um, there's also four, you, you also find four boxes of survival rations. Uh, and don't forget, there's five days worth in each box. So you've got 20 days of survival rations. Um, is you find you find that as well. Um, so yeah. Um, look, it, it it looks like it looks like the medical the medical kit the med, med pouch was hurled against the wall, which is what broke open most of the drugs. Um, again, you can see that happening. You can see the sapes doing something like that in their frustration. Yeah, mate. Did anybody write down the um, survival rations in a note? You probably should. I did. Yeah, I think I have a, I have a note of stuff we found. Somebody's got a Jetsum note. Uh, 
I had one for the storage room. Well, there's no reason why you can't make another one if you wanted to. I mean, that's what it's there for. Somebody has a box. box yeah, box. only one. Whoever creates it's the only one that can edit it. But anybody can create a new one. But I don't know if we want a whole bunch. It's up to you guys, mate. The notes area, as far as I'm concerned, the notes area is yours to play with as you wish. It was just Remember the it. 10 bio. I, I altered my notes to just be about persons. So yeah, it's fine. Otherwise, it gets um, too much stuff. Yeah, don't forget that. Every note, am I on speaker? Yeah, every note, a, a, every piece of information you put into the system goes into the database, and the database has got to go to everybody when you log on. So the more stuff in the system as a whole, the longer it takes to load up. That includes images, notes, things like that. I wouldn't, too, I wouldn't be too worried. Um, notes are, um, the notes don't take up much space in terms of transfer. Images are way worse. This was um, in so, yeah. C3? Or C1? Uh, C3. C3 has had, had that stuff, if that's what you're asking. Uh, the 10 bio court. Uh, oh, no. The, well, whoever's got the bio court should probably, whoever's carrying the bio court should probably take the bio, write it on their sheet. Yeah, it's that's on the sheet. That's the sort of thing that gets, um, that's the sort of thing that gets used up. The survival rations is the thing I think you need to record. Isn't that right? Is that right? Sound right? Yeah, that's what yeah. I was most concerned with. Mm. Now, Kat, one last thing. Um, that access hatch next to Terminal 5, the one labelled J slash MT, mm -hmm. that's actually probably the computer itself behind that hatch. Oh. Each box and is five days for one person? Yeah. Okay. Or however you want to divide it up, but yeah, each, each box contains five, five, five days of food, survival ration food. Um, yeah, so, um... You would know that. Well, you would be aware of that being the, being a computer expert. That um, now that you've had a chance to sit down at the terminal and work uh, at terminals and work things out, that that's actually probably the computer itself behind that behind that inspection hatch. Gotcha. Uh, well, I might as well take a peek at it then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The you know you, the typical the typical thing you'd expect. You know. Um, Box um, set in a rack, <laughs> yeah, flashing lights, yeah, um, access ports, things like that, you know. Um, so, if you wanted to hook, for example, if you wanted to hook your CAC to it, you could do that, yeah, and that would be the same as hooking a terminal to it directly. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you want to do that or not, but it's up to you. But basically, each of the terminals is acting like a, a, an access computer. is an access computer, effectively, to wherever the systems are in the in the complex. Well, the JMT is obviously in C1. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to make a difference to you long term, but but yeah. My expectation, like the way that I appreciate how computers work would be that the the login issue would happen no matter whether I was accessing it on my CAC or the actual terminal. Yeah. 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 That is correct. Probably just Windows, and I need to turn it on and off again. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm going to do that. I've got to do that every now and then in my Linux boxes. I just got to do it one tenth the time. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so did we did we open up the access panel and take a look? Yeah, Cat did. I don't know if anyone's looking over Cat's Cat's shoulder or not. Yeah, sure. 
Yeah, and a little bit like about a, computers. Yeah, well, it looks like a computer. Um, as I said, it's got a it's got an access it's got an access port for a for a, a CAC or a or whatever. And obviously, there's um, you can just make out um, fiber optic fiber optic lines going into the into the back of it. Um, there, just just hold on a sec. There are at least hang on, where is it? No, that's not it. Or was that it? Magic blue smoke is still inside it. Um, as far as you're aware, by the way, have you have you ever smelt the magic blue smoke when it escapes? Yeah. It stinks. Um, yeah. it's it's hard to tell. Um, it's good. Okay. Um, but there looks to be at least two lines. Um, is what you would guess going into the MT, the JMT. Two network lines? Two network lines, two fiber optic lines, or the equivalent thereof. Um, now, obviously, one would be from terminal three, would be the, a, a logical assumption. The other one, it just disappears into the infrastructure of the, of the station. In fact, they both disappear into the infrastructure of the station. You're, you're simply assuming that terminal three is one of them. Were you but it's hard. To log into it's, that one, Kat? It, hang on, it's hard to see because it's at the back of the thing, and you guys are—you know—you'd have to get in there and pull the pull the computer out and all the rest of it to actually tr do it, trace it properly, uh, which would probably mean shutting down the JMT, which is something you may or may not want to do. No, that was the one that you wouldn't log in, not because of a password denied thing. It was just. It rebooted straight away, essentially. It reset. Well, the password, the, the the software, the computer login software. Sorry, the computer security software reset itself. Yes. You didn't want to just uh, hold F8 while you get to the BIOS to. You know. <laughs> well, that's the equivalent of bypassing security, effectively. Sort of, kind of. Sort it only of, takes yeah. what three minutes on Windows. Oh yeah, it takes about ten minutes in this game. That's totally welcome to do that. I'm up for going to the um, airlock and moving on to the next area. I got Teresa's back. The only thing I can think of that we haven't asked the, the safes is whether or not they saw the computer operator, the, the Vrusk, at, at any point. So how would you word that? For the safes, because again, you know, these guys are not the smartest tools in the shed. We know his name, right? Ask him if they know where. Maybe when he, where you saw on. him last. The Vrusk. Okay, they don't. They don't really understand the word Vrusk. They look a bit puzzled when you say that. Bugs, big bug. Accord. Ah, oh, Accord. Yeah. Echo. So they, un they understand who Accord is, look, apparently. Where is he? She. Did you, she. Did you see? See Accord? They nod their heads. Where? Um, and they point to the pens. Room B2. Charlie 2 or Bravo 2? Uh, Bravo, uh, Charlie 2, sorry. B2. Uh, oh, shit. C2, Charlie 2. All right, so let's go search there. For yeah, give it a good go over. Okay. Uh, in that case, I need search rolls off you. Whoever's searching, please. Yeah, look, there's there's no sign of a there's no sign of a rusk carcass. There's no sign of a rusk full stop in uh, Charlie Two. Are there any other points of egress in that area? No. No. 
One way in, one way out. Nothing on the floor, nothing on the ceiling. Nothing. No, no. Nothing like that. Plot twist. It's the porridge. <laughs> oh dear. That's a terrible thing to say. You know that, don't you? Yep. Hey, I was just trying to satisfy my curiosity. So we still have a missing computer operator for us. Mm -hmm. um, I had a question. Um, yeah, terminal, yes. Computer Terminal 6, that was blocked out because of the cartoons and stuff running, right? Yes, there's cartoons running backwards and the, and the astrogation tutorial audio. Um, and as far as Cat was able to determine, there was no way to bypass that via Terminal 5. Haven't asked. No, it looked like we could. Uh, there was a communications program could disable it, maybe. Um, but we I hadn't tried. Uh, uh, is it um, is that something that would take a while? Is it worth taking um, considering? Well, considering you're here for for at least thirty days, it's up to you guys. Because you remember, you won't be back in range of the money spider until you know. Right, but is it is it like way. a you know is it like a five ten minute thing or is it like a half day thing? In which case, depends we what, probably want to keep looking around. It depends on what cat wants to how how cat wants to approach it. Uh, I think it would be looking at the communications program and seeing if I could disable that particular transfer of the file. All right. What you'd probably have to do is give me a programming role to do that because of the bug, um, in which case it's D10 hours for that type of thing normally. So it could take an hour, it could take up to half to, up to a full day, depending on how bad the thing is. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. No, oh, no, sorry, you, oh, just, you're just doing manipulate programs. Okay, sorry, I thought you were doing a rewrite. Um, if you're manipulating, manipulating programs, yeah, look, um, would you 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 get the um you get the um cartoons and that stopped on terminal six okay mm -hmm. but ten minutes later they start up again <laughs> was anybody able to do anything uh, in ten minutes i don't know what would you what would you like what, what would you try and do <laughs> uh, i don't know just List the info on the machine. Oh, I need an operate computer to to start with, as per normal. Okay, and then the mm -hmm. okay um, terminal six can connect to both the um, the J, the J, the JGL. It also appears to do a um, it also appears to do some sort of um, for want of a better term secure shell over to another terminal. Hmm. Okay. Are you using that option? Sure. I need another operate computer because technically you've gone to a... Okay, yeah. Um, so you're connected up to this remote terminal, whatever it is. You're not even sure which one. It, you're not even sure where it is or what it is. There's no label on it at all. Um, but you've got access to it. Um, do you want to try? Do you want to try and access what is connected to that terminal? Um, actually, it's not. It's, it's a, um, that appears to be connected to. Thank you. That appears to be connected to the JLS computer, which is a level one computer. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, now, just hold on a sec. I've just got to confirm something before I go. I go any further because I don't want to give you bad information. Okay, the JLS has a computer security program on it mm -hmm. to start with. And does 953402 work? Is that the one I've listed for you? Yes. Yes, uh, yes it does work. 
um, it was a level two computer security on that particular computer. Um, you can now do, you can now, you've now got access to that computer properly. Um, it's apart from the computer, the computer security program, it's got a single uh, level one life support program on it. Oh yeah, can I uh, fiddle with that program to see if it can uh, fix the uh, food machines? Uh, yeah, just give me a second. I've just got to track it, trace it back, <laughs> or at least get the info. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, this looks like it's the backup support life support program. Um, so this this particular computer and piece of software looks like it, it controls the backup life support system. Hmm. And so backup, probably talking the like air and and no, it's a full control. it's a full system. It's a full backup life support system. Whatever the primary system is controlling, this one can could, can control as well. Okay. Can we tell if if um, life support systems that are currently operating is being controlled by the main system or the backup system? Well, the backup system is in standby mode, so it's the main. It'd be the main system. I think you'd want to save that for now until we take the primary offline. If that's what we have to do to purge the virus. What virus? We keep thinking there are bugs in the computers, right? So, a virus named Hal. <laughs> yeah, that too. Daisy, Daisy. Sorry, I've been watching too much 2001. Uh, and so, uh, I'm guessing by this time, the cartoons have come back. Yeah, by uh, now they have, yeah. Would I have gotten the impression that 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 terminal might have been something that the computer operator hacked in to try and uh it's possible yeah it's certainly possible oh. all right now now i'm getting a bit of cerise's paranoia <laughs> um, how how is trying to prevent us from getting to the backup uh, thinking of what cat's saying you know the how is trying to prevent us from getting to the backup because getting the backup might purge how. Well, if we get to the backup, that means we can take down the primary. Yeah. So how is using these cartoons to prevent us from you know getting to the backup because we we caught a glimpse of it and then we got kicked back out. I I think it. we should also consider the possibility that uh, the computer operator who's currently missing might be actively working against us. I don't know. That's ten minutes is a, ten minutes is a long time. Is a long time. Um, Cat can tell you this. Ten minutes is a long time for somebody. I mean, she could have done it inside a minute. All right. And while she's good, she's not. You know, she's nothing outstanding in terms of her computer skills yet. You're only level four, aren't you? Uh, yeah, five. Five. Okay, she's a bit better than average. Well, she's quite a bit better than average. Um, but I mean, she could have done it in a in, in a minute. Ten minutes is a long. I mean, that's the type of thing you'd expect a newbie to a, a newbie to take. Right. Now, it's possible, of course, that if that was the case, the computer operator would didn't notice for a while. But again, any competent computer saboteur would have. I would have expected to put up a, a watchdog on, on anything like that and been alerted immediately. As would Cat. Cat would expect that as well. But it's a possibility. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just, you know. suggest we continue trying to clear the area at least see if we can locate this last team member yep probably not a bad idea and how in the heavy war bot but that's good <laughs> what heavy war bot the one that 
hell occupies. Uh, okay. You want to get really paranoid? Let's say Hal's actually a, a, a computer brain in a warbot. How's that sound? So it's actually partly by it. So, so he's a, actually an organic being. Cybot. In, cybot. So with a all safe, the... Uh, safe our brain in a warbot. A safe our, yeah, a safe our brain, uh, just to make it interesting. Uh, therefore knows about how, knows all about human intuition and things like that. So you're not just up against an AI, you're up against a, a living AI. Exactly. As such. As such. That survived Volturnus. <laughs> it survived Volturnus. Okay. <laughs> Why not? Oh, uh, dear. You gotta get, you who gotta is get actually the, who is actually the computer operator, but was surgically altered to look like a Vrusk and has been undercover all this time. Right, okay. Now you guys are just simply getting paranoid. So, um, yeah, uh, airlock from C1 heading west, or what we're calling west, yes? Yep, on the next. That's east, but yeah. Uh, east, sorry, yeah, that was <laughs> me. Uh, the other west. The other you west. You Aussies, you get everything upside down. No, well, we live upside down. We come from the land down under, so what do you expect? You know. All right, so let me give you the full description before you guys jump in on this one, okay? Ah, bloody yep. odd-shaped rooms. Okay. <laughs> now, that's paranoia, Cat. Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, again, this is uh, standard temperature, standard radiation, as far as you can tell, uh, and at, at minus 10 degrees centigrade. Um, there is, is obviously there's been a battle here in this room. Okay. Um, with like blast marks or? Yeah. Yeah. There's blast, there's blast, 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 blast no, marks. No surprises okay. why. Uh, well. Did we lose Matt? I think so. I wonder if his blast marks are anything like skid marks. User in your channel timed out. Rip. Oh, there goes Fantasy Grounds as well. See, this is why I'm not so keen about Matt hosting the uh, the uh, team speak, because that means that when this happens, everybody drops. Just, yeah. just, we, we, I kind of don't mind paying for a bit of network redundancy just so that we don't lose that. We have to go back to email when this kind of thing happens. <laughs> These blast marks are too close together. Only Imperial stormtroopers. <laughs> have that <laughs> vision, except they can't actually hit a person. Yeah. Sand people travel in single file in order to hide their numbers. You uh, you weren't here for that session, but uh, the 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 shape of this room and that little icon is exactly the same as the auto turret that kind of owned us a bit. I think it owned us pretty bad, actually. Up there in Alpha Three. Yeah, it wasn't that yeah. bad. The lasers sucked, but the grenades were mostly non-lethal, or yeah. were all non-lethal. All it takes is uh, some very unlucky rolls on a dose grenade, and those kind of encounters go very differently, though. Yeah, exactly. I recall Ben was rolling horribly <laughs> while playing Jazz. Oh, uh, yeah, is it? I, I think ja Jazz stabbed himself or something with the sonic sword. In the eye? No, not quite that bad. But it was pretty bad. But that's kind of typical of Jazz's rules, I've found, over uh, over the course of the campaign. Channel. Sorry about that, guys. I dropped out for a second. Um, you guys should be able to reconnect. In, some of you. In fact, some of you already are. I gotta hide the um, hide the game real quick while I reconnect so it doesn't show the IP. Yeah, thank you. 
Um, what was the last thing you heard? Yeah, no. What was the last thing you heard from these guys? That we just Scorch found a uh, hundred thousand credit chip. Right. Glass marks. Mm. Yeah, glass marks. Yeah. Imperial glass marks. <laughs> you weren't imperial, bloody bloody. Okay, so uh, yeah, um, there are blast marks all over the uh, uh, down the, on the, over the walls. Um, I'm assuming you're looking at all this from the from the doorway. Um, there is one of those automated turrets, you know the ones, uh, mm -hmm. the ones that um, you guys are so were so fun of back in the area A. Does it um, move towards us? No, it doesn't. But hang on a sec. As I said, let me finish before you jump in on me. Um, um, the security door, which you would expect to be at the end of D1, has been burnt or blown away. And so the corridor beyond is visible. Um, you don't think it's been breached because there's no howling wind from the planet, out, the atmosphere outside. Um, like there was in Corridor A2, Alpha 2. Um, so, yeah. Um, also, um, standing over near the other airlock door, on the opposite side of the turret, is a... Um, um, robot. Appears to be a, um, a maintenance bot, possibly. Um, with, but it's got a, it's got a highly reflective, a highly reflective metallic skin, unlike most robots, which are painted or whatever. Um, apart from that, that's what you see. Does the robot look? Powered on, active, it, alert. It looks, it looks powered on. Yes. Does the turret have any like blinky lights on it that would also indicate if it's on or off? Uh, no. Is the turret damaged? Uh, not that you can see. Um, it is pointing straight down corridor. D d d it's D two, but that doesn't mean straight down the the access corridor to the southwest, uh, southeast. So straight down this way. Yeah, I'm okay. not in yet. All right, yeah, sorry. Give it a second. Don't know, why not? You know, I'm still, still connecting up. Anyway, you'll see when I get when you get in. Get in. There you go. Well, that was baby. No, that was you. Yep. All right. So uh, straight down the it's, it's straight down that arrow. Yeah, that's the the laser turret pointing straight down that arrow. The grenade turret, on the other hand is slightly offset from that, slightly towards the robot, slightly towards the robot. Can we tell which robot this is? Um, I don't know, can you? Well, we found the domestic duties one. Millie, yeah, you found Millie. Yeah. Is the robot armed with any weapons? No. Just its arm, just its arms. Yeah, just no. Yeah. Well, if we don't think the turret's gonna attack us, I can go disable the robot. Is that what you want to do? Let's uh, let's uh like wait a few seconds, not move into the room and see if the turret starts pointing towards us. Okay. And if the robot starts moving at all. Mm -hmm. uh, no, not yet. If I remember right, those cubby holes were out of the range of the turret. Yeah, the turret's basically, let me see if I can draw it in for you, hang on. Um... Oh, they have a limited arc. Yeah, something like that. So, 
So technically, I suppose where you're standing now, you are in line of fire. You are in line of fire of the of the turret, but um, it's not pointing at you at this point. Right. Well, Jazz is going to keep his rifle pointed at the train on the turret, just okay. in case. Cool. Um, but yeah, if the tech guys want to investigate, uh, I've got you covered. Um, actually, I'll move into that cubby hole and I'll look for access panels to the turret. Okay. Um, as you move into the, as you move to, towards the turret into that cubby hole, the grenade launcher starts swinging towards you. Now, obviously, you're going to get undercover before it can get round, but the grenade turret is certainly operational. It well, appears to be operational. Okay. Um, you, can, can you give me a um, can you give me a search roll, mate, please? Okay. Um, yeah, you have you can't see you can't there doesn't seem to be any access panel um, here. Now the other thing I need to tell you is as you as you moved into the room, the um, silver robot um, started moving towards you. I'm gonna need um, initiative rolls, I think, guys, for this one. Not that necessarily going into combat, but I need to keep track of time here. Um, I'm going to mark him as neutral. Um, okay. Much better. Right. Uh, so what do we get? We got a doc got an eight. And Vat got a 15. Vat got a 15. And Babu got a 10. Where are you, Babu? There you are. Babu got a 10. And Jazz got a 15 as well. And Cat got a 12. And Cerise got, is that your, it is your seven, Cerise? Yes. Okay. That's okay. And and sorry, give me a sec. Oh, by the way, um, it's obvious now. Um, that um, the robot's taken some laser damage, looks like. And it's man-shaped. Man-sized, man-shaped. Okay. Humanly man-shaped. Okay. As opposed to Yazirian man-shaped. Okay. Folk is going to hang back for now. i got to go AFK real quick. Okay. Um, so, uh, Jazz, um, you see the robot start to move towards you guys. What are you guys going to do? Um, Jazz is going to just hold for now. Um, essentially, okay. if, 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 uh, if anything starts attacking... Um, Cerise, because Cerise is in front right now. If anything that stops attacking Cerise, then Jazz will open fire on whatever attacks Cerise. Right. The uh, the auto turret starts swinging back towards the robot, by the way. So Voke was poor, so I'll drop him down. Um, Cat. Uh, so, hmm. Whatever, she hates these turrets. Uh, <laughs> She's going to walk in there and swing at her sonic sword at it. At the turret? Yeah. Okay, cool. You can do that. What's a hit? 
Uh, uh, now that you're up nice and close, you can see that the turret's been damaged as well. Okay. All right. No worries. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Hang on. That's the one I wanted. Oh, you make me do math, won't you? I hate that. Make me do mathematics is terrible. How, how dare you? Mm -hmm. There it is. Okay. Um. So. Um, okay. Whoopsie daisy. Um, so the robot goes to actually grapple you, cat having made yourself a target. Okay. Do you have an anti-shock implant? Yes. Okay. Do you have a skin suit? Yes. Do you have an albedo screen? Yes. Is it turned on? Honestly? Uh, it wouldn't, it doesn't cost anything to have it on. So I, I don't, I, I feel like it would be on. Okay. Fair enough. I'm not going to argue with you because it was a logical, it's a logical assumption to make. Um, so I need a strength check off you because it is wrestling you as opposed to attacking you. It's trying to restrain you. Okay, no, it's got you effectively pinned. Um, I suspect you would have dropped your sword too, don't you? Yeah, I would suspect so. Yeah, okay. So that's the bot. So, Babu, you can see this man, this anthropomorph anthropomorphic human-like um, silver robot has um, got Cat in a bear hug. Um, uh, now that the robot has started kind of acting aggressively, can Jazz react? Sure. You hold your action so, phone if you want to. So yeah, give me a second, Babu. Sorry, Babu. Um, Jazz is going to open fire on the robot. At who? The robot. Okay. Um, uh, carefully. Who's grappling with Cat? You'll be fine, Cat. No worries. Oh, there's, there's last words if ever I heard them. <laughs> In fact, I have heard them and they were almost last words. Uh, this is without the careful aim modifier, which doesn't really matter. <laughs> oh, wait, it does matter. Um, careful aim is, what, has another 15? 15, yeah. So that probably hits? Yeah, it's a 91. Yep, that should hit. That should hit. Okay. So, Cat. A laser bolt streams past your head, actually singes the hair on your ears, assuming you have hair on your ears, and strikes the uh, strikes the robot. Nice. Is it canon now that the uh, cat is a human female who has hairy ears? Oh, every human, every human female has got hairy ears, just how pr prominent they are. <laughs> Um, the, ears, the, ears, hang on, the, ears, the ears and the hair. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Just wax their ears. Um, oh, what you got? Yeah. You wax the ears. Uh, I'm just wondering, the laser bolt that hit the robot, did it seem to reflect off in a way, or it just seemed to... No, it seemed to, it seemed to do some damage. Okay. So, Babu. Yep. What do you want to do? 
Uh, they, they're not moving now, right? Sorry, say again? They're not moving. They're basically just hanging. Grappled. Cats. And they're just together. Yeah, they, they, they're together uh, only uh, a few metres away. Um, but it's obviously the robot is, is, is going to be dragging cat somewhere. It's got, it's got that look to it. Save cat. Yells Jazz to Babu. How big is this robot? I mean, does it look like I think I could pick up? How big how big's the what? The room or the bot? The robot. It looks like a human being. Literally, it's a, it's an anthropological it's, it, it it looks more like a human being than most robots do because it's actually got uh the anthropomorphic body to it. Yeah, what I'm so, saying is does it does it look like it's solid lead that I won't be able to pick it up or is it just life CPO type thing that maybe I can pick it up? Well, it's CPO like thing. Actually, it's it's, it's closer to the Silver Surfer, really. Um um in in terms of what it looks like um it's very very human you you couldn't you couldn't mistake it for a human um that's certainly not the case but it is it is you know very human in shape um and it appears to be a standard anthropomorphic um human uh anthropomorphic robot which would mean it probably weighs what a regular robot would weigh a regular non heavy duty robot would weigh Quite a bit. Uh, I think I'll try to grapple it then and hold it in place so Ceres can set him off. All right, no worries. Uh, question: Do you have um, a suit? Skin suit with the uh, albedo screen. Yep. All right, and do you have an anti shock implant as well? Only on the helmet. Only on the helmet. So. Sorry, an anti-shock implant on the helmet? No, but... Yeah, yeah, I got the implant, yeah. You got the implant, right. That's... Thank you. That's... I just, mm. uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, so make an attack roll, please. A, a melee attack roll. Without weapon. Oh, wow. Well done. Okay, so you managed to grapple the... Grapple the... Grapple the bot. Uh, and uh, give me a strength check as well, please, mate. Yeah, okay. Well, you've certainly got a hold of the bot um, in that regard. So, at the end of your turn, Doc, what do you want to do? Anything? Yeah, no, we're we're waiting to hear the call for the medic. Okay. Therese? Um, try to get the access panel off so I can deactivate the robot. Right, okay. Um, do you have what suit, what screen, and you've got any shock implant too, don't you? Correct. Uh, yeah. Skin suit and albedo. So you've all, you've, all got the, you've, you've all got the same, in other words, at this stage. That's okay. I just need to know. Um, uh, yeah, um, okay. Um, you want to give me a, uh, a reaction? Uh, no, it's a dex check, isn't it? You want to give me a dex check, please? Right, okay. Not a problem. Uh, Voke. Uh, so where's this robot? The three of them, or the four of them, are basically give or take there. Okay, so they're not, so that's why the turn isn't shooting anybody. Uh, I didn't say that. Or hasn't shot anybody yet. That's better. Um, by the way, well, the, uh, the, grenade, the grenade launcher is pointing at, at that group at practically point blank range. I don't suppose there's another uh, spot for me to grapple the robot? Oh, uh, not really. Not with... Not I with figure... Abu in there and Cat in there and Teresa trying to get the panel open. No. I will shout, go team. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Um, you better give me initiative rolls then, guys, please. I don't think there's that much I can do. I can't do the turret. I don't. I don't want to run in there and just get shot because Ceres is doing the turret and everybody else has occupied the robot and there's no space for that. So. Yes, I'm doing the robot, not the turret. 
at the moment. Yes, yeah, I, oh. I don't remember the previous turret. How was that one disabled? You shot the shit out of it. Yeah. Okay. In a nutshell, where are you? I think that's three. That's the problem. Your your icon your icon is different from your your portrait. And I, I I I'm looking for the portrait in the combat tracker and can't find it. Can I? <laughs> Don't mind me. Jazz, you're on seventeen. All right. Okay, that's actually not correct. Yep, no, okay, that's that one. Uh, okay. Um, so, can I get strength checks off both Babu and Cat, please? Yeah. Okay. So here's what ha here's here's what what happens, um, and I'm going to give the op I'm going to give you the option here, and I'm going to give Babu the option here too. The robot basically drags everybody over to about there, give or take. Okay. Babu, you can release your hold on the robot and not be dragged, if you wish. Cerise, you may choose to follow up at this time, or you may choose to be left behind. Uh, you did get the panel, I won't say open, I'll say ajar. Okay? I think I'll try to maintain my hold on him. Right, drag. fine. Cerise? Cerise? Sorry, falling asleep. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Was it, is it that late, is it? <laughs> uh, I was up early and at the racetrack no, all day. It, oh, well, you, what were you racing? Uh, my Type R. Okay, cool. Um, so, so uh, uh, turn off the robot. Let me deactivate. You have, you, well, hang on now. No, I, I, that wasn't the question. The question was, are you going to stay with the, stay with the group or are you going to be left behind? I didn't know the group. Uh, no, yeah. I'll stay with the robot, wherever the robot right. is. That's fine. That's, that's, so I just need to know where everybody is. Okay, that's what the robot does. Um, Jazz, what are you doing? Uh, the turret, the grenade turret, is is now pointing at the group, including the robot, right? Yes, it's tracking that group. All right, so Jazz is going to uh, <laughs> redirect his aim towards the turret instead of the group. Okay. Um, and um, so I, I don't remember. Laser rifle allows two shots in one turn. If you don't care for aim, yeah. Yeah, if you don't care for aim. Okay, so Jazz is going to take two shots at the um, the grenade turret. Do I have to pick between the grenade turret and the turret turret? No, not really. All right, so Jazz is going to shoot the turret twice. Uh, no care for aim. Sorry, no care for aim, did you say? No care for aim. So that's okay. the first shot. Mm -hmm. That's the damage. And that's the second shot. Mm -hmm. And that's the damage. So that's another 20 SEU. Mm -hmm. Okay. The turret didn't seem to have a screen, did it? A screen? Oh, like sorry, you mean a, a shield? No, didn't appear okay. to. Okay. So, um, the turret actually goes on the same count as you do. So, as the laser shots, as the laser, as your laser rifle shots hit the turret, the turret fires. Now, um, yeah, okay. Um, two laser blasts fire straight down the um, straight down the down the, the corridor, uh, which means that the four of you are potential targets for each shot. So let me roll some attack rolls. Uh huh. Mm. 
Right. The image right now is actually a little bit comedic, right? It's like the Silver Surfer robot dragging yeah. cat along. Mm -hmm. Babu is clinging onto it, trying to pull it free, but it just walks with Babu clinging onto it. And uh, Cerise is like oh, I, scrambling I, uh, to keep up next to it. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say walked. I say dragged. Um, dragged. Bab Babu did. I mean, let's face it. It didn't move as far as it could. It, it didn't move as far as you would expect. It only moved two or three meters. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, they are having an effect on its movement rate. But yes, that's basically what's happening. Okay. So um, one of the bolts hits Cat, I'm afraid, and the other one hits the robot. Um, so, um, ignore that. I thought I'd better tell you that one before you freaked out with all the dice rolls. So, the damage to Cat, and I, I'll be that screen, and I, is 44. So uh, what's that? Uh, nine SEU, I think. Yeah. And the the damage to the robot is okay. That okay. Um, and at the same time, a right. The grenade part of the turret also fires at the group. Um, Cat, you've got no chance. Cerise, you do. Babu. Can I get reaction speeds off Cerise and Babu, please? Yep, coming. Uh, I'm afraid you didn't do very well, Babu. I think he dragged, my, dragged me with my back to the turret. Yeah, possibly. Um, Cerise, you managed to leap out of the way as a tangler grenade goes off and encompasses Cat and the robot. And Babu. So well, that all that way you guys, you know, that's a perfect grapple. <laughs> so, um, yeah. now the turret, the turret is destroyed uh, by the laser, by the um, the laser blast from Jazz, um, and the robot is destroyed from the laser blast from the turret. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm not that nasty. Uh, well, maybe I could be. Um, so. The only consequences at the moment is that Cat is in the embrace of a, of a destroyed robot, um, and in a tangle, and along with Babu is in a tangle, tangle grenade remains. Um, Wait, so the robot's gone. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Jock, what do you want to do? <laughs> well, I didn't hear anyone scream out in pain, so we'll delay to the end of the round after series. Cat. Uh, I don't think I can do anything. You can try and get it out of the robot's grip. Well. <laughs> uh, yes, you managed, to dis you managed to disentangle yourself from the robot itself, um, which wasn't too hard considering it's practically destroyed, but you're still within the uh, tangler, tangler grenade threads. Uh, meanwhile, Jazz has pulled out his, uh, his uh, smartphone and taken a, a camera shot of the lover's embrace that you're all in. Which is uh, you're probably probably going to go up on Facebook. Um, Vogue? I take it I saw the Tangler grenade go off. Oh yeah. Okay, I'll uh, go over with a vial of solve away and free. Do you have a vial? I of solve have two away? vials. Right. Okay. Uh, so you'll so you move out. You, so you got to get it out of wherever you've got it stashed. I'm assuming your backpack or somewhere like yeah. that, or a pocket or something. Yeah. So you won't be able to do it this round. You'll get over there this round, but yeah, it'll take a round or two before you get get them out. Babu, you're tangled and still gripping a destroyed robot. Yep. yep. Oh, I don't know. Oh, Maybe okay. I can let go of the robot, but. I can't <laughs> um, you can also you can also actually you and Cat can both give me a spot check too, please, will you? Not that. Check or search. Search. It's the same thing, effectively. Cat gets lost in the eyes of the robot. Uh, no, last week there were several different roles. You could do. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, Babs, um, you spot a serial number on the bot. It's SW66. Is that supposed to be Star Wars SW66. Order 66? 
<laughs> no, but nice joke. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, you, let, you let go, you said, Babu. Sharice, what do you want to do? You've got 10 so, grenade threads everywhere. The, the, and the robot's destroyed. Yeah, it's obvious. It's no, it's no, the, the, the magic blue smoke's um, escaped from it. Okay. I'll go to the other side of the turret and look for an access panel over there. All right. Oops, just one. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there is an access panel over here. Uh, it's a repair roll to get it open because you've got to bust your way through things. Um, you manage to get the hatch open. Inside is um, some magic blue smoke. Um, um, there's a whiff of um, dose gas in the air, not enough to affect you, but enough to give you a bit of a start when you first smell it. Um, and Tengra grenade threads everywhere. It looks like when the turret was taken out by the laser blast from Jazz, it hit the magazine, the grenade magazine. Oh, so both are already destroyed, the robot and the turret. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I, you didn't hear me say that, obviously. No, I think I was asleep then. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, so, Jazz, let me, let me recap real quick. Jazz shot the turret. At the same instant, the turret um, shot Cat and the robot, destroying the robot, and also hit you with a do hit, hit, hit the, the, the guys with a doze grenade. Yeah, so oh, Jazz perfect. shot the turret and that killed it, and before it died, grenade. it shot the robot and killed the robot. Yeah, and could have killed Cat if Cat wasn't wearing an albedo suit. So yeah, um, so yeah, so the turret, the innards of the turret, it's it's yeah, it's it's, it's cactus, mate. Unfortunately. So yes. What do you guys want to do? Apart from dissolve the tangle grenade threads, which I'm assuming you're doing now. Yeah, let's look down the corridor towards the other, I'm guessing, docking arm. Uh, yeah, it's probably a good um, thing. Yeah, I'll um, use so one vial of solve away if someone else could use the other one so I'm not completely out. You only need one vial for the grenade, grenade, right? Yeah, that's right. Oh, for the whole grenade? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ah, yeah, you're right. Sorry for the roughness of the drawing. It's very hard. It's pretty hard to draw with a trackball. Have you noticed? Yeah. Okay, so um, you can see all the way down the down the arm of the thing. Yes, there's a docking bay at the end. Yes, there is a shuttle in the docking bay at the end. It's probably not shown on the map yet. Um, the airlock doors have been blasted open. So the minute the shuttle leaves, the whole of Area Delta is going to go vacuum. Or not vacuum, going to go um, uh, ventri Ventry's atmosphere, um, like uh, Corridor A, Alpha, Alpha 2 was on the other side. Um, there are scorch marks along the walls. Um, so the security door and the hatches of the airlock, both hatches of the airlock, airlock at the far end are, uh, are, are destroyed. Um, there's a few scorch marks on the nose of the shuttle you can see from here too. Shall we proceed to investigate? Yeah, let's go see what state that shuttle's in. All right. And if there's any bodies. Um, what's wrong with that? Hang on. Yeah, that's about it. Um, no, the, the, you don't see any bodies. Um, there is a locker, um, uh, which is out of the line of fire down in the airlock, down in Delta Three. Um, apart from that, there's the, sh the shuttle itself. So that should be in viro suits for the folks who don't have them. I think everybody uh, does. Yeah, there are four four chill suits, four breathing masks, uh, four power belt packs, 
and, and four oxygen tanks in the locker. Um, Cat, you, do you need to replace your power belt pack? Uh, don't, I think it's like halfway at the moment. Uh, let me check. Um, the shuttle looks intact, actually. Apart from the odd scorch, scorch mark on its nose. Now, apparently no one was hurt, um, Doc. Hurt, hurt pride, maybe, but not, not nothing physical. The jazz might end up hurt. Sorry, what was that? The jazz might end up hurt. <laughs> that was smartphone jumped up. Uh, so what are you doing, guys? Um, are you checking out the shuttle, you said? Or were you taking the stuff um, out of the locker, or both? I, I was checking out the shuttle. Yeah, it's right. the ones that need the chill say. suits to get in them. Does anyone need to get in the chill suits? No, I think everybody had them. So no, we found a second supply. So this is the third set we've uh, got. That's okay. As long as it just let you know. Um... I'll let you guys work out what you want to what you want to salvage, if anything. Uh, make a note for yourselves. Um, um, so the shuttle, I said, the, the shuttle, the shuttle appears to be uh, appear to be undamaged from the outside. From the inside, though, it's obviously at least one laser blast um, has made it into the interior, um, and the control panel. Which is very similar to the ones that you had um, in the uh, in your shuttle, uh, without the emergency low orbit um, button that was installed at the money spider. Um, it it appears to be well. It's got a few it's got a few scorch marks on it, like it's uh, fried from the in, from the inside. Uh, are you going to power up the shuttle or attempt to power up the shuttle? No, not at this point. All right. Um, are you doing anything else? Searching the shuttle or anything else like that? Yep, search the shuttle. Alright. Looking for remains. Okay. Or canisters. <laughs> or 100,000 credit chips. Anyone else searching or just cat? Oh, sorry. Well, Therese can't find her can't find her own nose. Uh, but generally, um, look, the only thing you don't turn up any bodies at all, uh, and the only thing you do um, you do find in uh, one of the lockers, which would which was out of the line of fire from the turret up the corridor, um, is a carton of um, SEU power clips. Um, it is, um, it's a carton of 24, but four of them are missing. So there's 20 SEU power clips in a, in a carton. Okay. And you said this shuttle had the, um, uh, the button that they installed in case of emergency no does not have oh does not does not have hey guys i hate to i'm i think i'm gonna head out for the night and let maybe folk take over series you're falling asleep are you yeah all right, right before you go, could you just come out yeah. of the private room one for a second for me, please? Oh, sure, absolutely. User left your channel. User left How your ominous. Channel. That's encouraging.
User joined your channel. User joined your channel. Alright. Good night, guys. I will catch you in two weeks. Alright. Yeah, good night. No, no. Then. From your channel. Um, I'll get someone to take Cerise if we need to. It would, probably wouldn't hurt, but I'll do that in a second. When you let's go. He's got here. Wait a wait a second, folks. There we go. Try it now. Perfect. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, so that's the thing there. So apart from the, the short the short carton of SEU power clips, there's nothing else really here to worry yeah, you know, to work with. So what do you guys want to do? Um, I think I will finish search. There's nothing, nothing else there. Uh, the the laser scorch mark um, was that? Does it look like that's coming from a turret? Yeah, yeah. It looks like it, it okay. looks like the, the turrets. Well, obviously, it, it blasted its way through a security door and two airlocks, two airlock doors. So it's pretty obviously pretty powerful laser, laser shots. Um, so yeah. So is this shuttle flight worthy? Mm, I'm really asking the party. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, we're not sure. Yeah, the answer is probably we try to power it up. Yeah, the answer is probably no. Not if the not if the the control system's been fried, and it's probably not repairable here either. Not by you guys anyway. Yeah, I'm not right. a starship. So, are there any emergency rations in here? Nope. Spare med box? Nothing? Nope. Nope. I need the power clips. Not even a Snickers? No. Not, even a Snick <laughs> not even a Snickers. Actually, what you find is like the, the, the melted remains of a Snickers right by the scorch mark. Um, all right. Should we just back up to D1 and try okay. that uh, other airlock? Sure. Uh, there. Are you check? Are you going to bother checking the the telltales, or are you just going to open the door? Uh, let's search for traps. <laughs> okay. That's a that's a technician role then. Locate traps. Act, uh, alarms defences. Should you guys get dosed um, by a trap in last session? On one of the doors? Possibly. I can't remember. Um, either Volk or Series mm. want to try. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a repair roll? No. Uh, alarm. Uh, uh, alarm. Oh, alarm defenses. Detect alarm defenses. Um, Therese doesn't find any, any any traps on the door. You paranoid people, you? Um, well, uh, what does the reading say? Uh, minus 10 centigrade, standard oxygen, no radiation. Okay. All right. Uh, Jazz will have his rifle ready. Um, mm -hmm. Dabu, would you mind opening the door? Uh, I can open the door. Um, I just want to ask another question because I don't know about the robot stuff, but I guess uh, Cerise would know. Like, even though the robot's been pretty much destroyed, uh, would so we still be able to access it and kind of look into its mission and its programming or that sort of stuff, or is it completely shut? Um, no, well, it's possible. Um, I mean, the robot only took a, it's only, it's only taken a couple of, I mean, it's taken a couple of, a couple of wounds, a couple of, you know, but um, you might be able, you might be able to get something out of it. Um, yeah. Probably best, probably best to do that back in the machine shop. 
um, you know, back in C, back in Charlie one. Um, but it shouldn't be it shouldn't be too hard. All right, let's. Uh, well, we open the door. We saw that, you know, as expected, leads to another door. Uh, before we go through that, um, shall we just have Cerise take a take a quick look through the robot and see one first? Sure. It'll take some time, but you can do You've that. Got time. You got time. Okay. Um, all right. Well, you better give me you better give me the appropriate robot um, robot um, list functions and all the rest of it roles, mate. Okay. How much time is this taking? 10, 10 15 minutes. Oh, okay, cool. More just if there's some stuff that's in the hour time range, then. Uh... Oh, yeah, no, I would have told you that. Yeah. I'm not that much of an. Uh, well. <laughs> no comment. There's the list functions. Yeah, hang on a sec. Where the hell? What's the? Okay. Um, it's hard to tell. Only because I can't find the information. It's hard. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that's that thing, that's that, that's that. Um, yeah, okay. Um, Uh, the mission what mission is to um, assist uh, assist the safe handler with handling the safes. Uh, safes are defined as uh, the description of a safe. Uh, the safe handler is is defined as um, uh, one of the four uh, standard races um, assigned to the station. Um, so there's basically there's nothing unusual about any of it. Um, however, it does appear to be a little bit glitchy in some of the um, in, in in some of the the functions. Um, apparently, you would have it, it'd be a guess and only a guess, but from the way it acted and from what you can see in its uh, programming, it may have mistaken you guys for safes. Mm. And was trying to return return you to the pins, but got its directions mixed up somehow. Now that's pure speculation. That's not fact. Okay. Um, appears how strikes again. <laughs> how? Dear, oh dear, oh dear, me. So, what would you like to do, ladies and gentlemen? Um, I guess we'll just go back to the airlock door. Um, yep. D one. Oh, the, yeah, that one. Um, and you're going to open that door? Yeah. So Jazz will ask Babu to open it while Jazz kind of points his rifle at it. All right. Uh, let me. Um, Okay, that's what you see. Now, before you do anything, say anything. There's a couple of mistakes on this, which I've got to put in. You to put in a couple of mistakes? Yeah, I'm gonna fix a, I'm gonna fix a couple of mistakes. Can you make that out? As badly as it is? A couple of squares. Yeah, actually they're circles, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's terminal four and that's terminal one. Yeah, they're mislabeled oh. on the map. They're mislabeled from they're, they're mislabeled on the map here, which is the mistakes I was correcting. So um, now listen, the, the it's a it's a it looks like a, it looks like a control room. Um, it's got three terminals in it. 
um, as in the locations where I've put them, more or less. Um, there's also a, um, it's a robot. It's got a conical body. It's got, um, you can just make out um, a half a dozen wheels um, hidden beneath a wide base. Um, it's got three mechanical arms, uh, two of which have standard robot, pe uh, robot um, hands, pierces, pincers, and the third one has uh, a multi-tool attachment on it. Um, and on top of the cone is a, for want of a better term, in inverted air quotes, head with um, its sensor array on it. Um, the robot is, act it, it's turned on, it's active, it's, but it's not moving. Well, that's encouraging. So, and then I said there's the three terminals. Three workstation terminals. Yeah, yeah I made them look more like circles. I don't know if you can see that <laughs> drawing or not. Not yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't see it. But I said well, I made it look screen. more like circles for me. Yeah, right, fair enough. Anyway, um, so what, what are you going to do? Does, the, does a robot seem to have a silvery sheen around it that would be indicative of an albedo screen? No, it does not. Okay. Uh, it appears to be a standard body robot. Um, you can't make out its serial number from here. It's a bit far away. Um, I got magma goggles. <laughs> okay. Uh, are, are you using them? Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's FX it's FX dash one T. So it's the general maintenance bot. Um, Jazz will keep his rifle pointed at the robot, and then say, right. Cerise, um, you want to try to deactivate this one? Yep. So Cerise will... He'll turn on his inertia screen, and he will move in. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, the, ro the robot takes no notice of you. You will access its panel with a dex check. Yeah. Well, you don't need a dex check because you're not. It's not in combat with you. But yeah. And it'll flip the off switch. And the robot powers down. Oh, that was strangely easy. Well then. If it's too e if it's if it's if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. It's probably gonna blow up. Yeah, I was about to say he's a bomb. <laughs> He's the bomb, the bomb, not a bomb, the bomb. Sorry. Um, may I suggest uh, Cat checks out the terminals in whichever order while Cerise tries to get the functions list off of the robot. The rest of us All searches right. the room for other stuff. All right. So everybody, everybody, search who's not who's, who's not uh, Cerise or Cat. Um, before you do that, I was about to say before you can list functions, it's got a security lock on it. Uh, which terminal is that, Cat? May as well do one first. All right, okay. So um, you do not. Okay, you manage to you manage to remove the uh, remove the security lock on the robot, um, and you access terminal one. Terminal one allows you to access um, JMC, sorry JMN or JGL. Cat, which would you like to access? What's JMC? JMN. Sorry, I misspoke. Ah. Uh, and w what was MN, the acronym? Main. Um, main. Oh. Uh, she'll go to the main one. All right. Um, it's got a computer security program on it. Yep. Uh, you guys don't find 
you All guys right. don't find anything of interest in your searching? Voke didn't find. Uh, Voke was what? Is, what was he searching for? Anything of interest? No, as I said, no. you don't find anything of interest. <laughs> Uh, Cat enters the pathway that she has in her list. Um, 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 um hang on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's got a computer lockout program. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, it works. You're you're in. Cool. Uh... Okay, it's got a computer. It's actually got a computer security program as well as the lockout. You'll have to bypass the, it's the security program as well. Cool. Which right. isn't that surprising considering it's a main computer. It's the main computer, apparently. Uh, what level is the security program? It's a level three. So was the lockout, by the, by the way. Yep, no problem. Um, so now you can list your uh, list your software as, as you as you would like. So uh, it's got uh, computer lockout three, which you just managed to bypass. Or computer security three, which you just managed to bypass. It's got a bureaucracy program level three. It's got a level three alarm. It's got an installation security level three, and it's got a level one life support program on it. Okay. Uh, sure. And it's level three itself. The computer itself is level three. Okay. Uh, first, she'll look at the uh, the installation security to see if there's a, there's a any info on what happened here. Okay, give me a second. I've got to find info security. Sure. Uh, that's not too bad. Um. Um, the inst installation security software obviously controls the platform's defences. Yeah. Um, what you do note is that um, it appears to be set for anything that moves is a threat to the station, mm -hmm. and therefore will be fired upon by the. Um, the, the the turrets obviously in T one in Delta one and Alpha one, yeah, or Alpha three, whatever. Sorry. Um, it's also the, the, yeah, that's what you see. Okay. Anything uh, else alive on this this here station? Nothing that's triggering any alarm so far with that with that particular piece of software. All right, I'll have a look at the uh, life support system next. Okay. To see why it may be set at minus 10 oh. degrees. Um, it, is the, it is the main control program for life support one, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to life support backup. Um, according to... According to this, what you can see... Um, it's the temperature is set at 25 degrees as far as the life support program is concerned. Yeah. And there's nothing on there to indicate any problems with the uh, food dispensing machines then? Mm, nothing that you can see. Yeah. According to the life support software it's a program, everything is 100% A-OK. -okay. Is, is this particular system where I could uh, transfer control of life support to the backup? Oh, yeah, you can shut it down to a manipulate program. I, you probably want to start the other life support first. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so that, was it. that was in standby mode or something, wasn't it? It was in standby mode, so yeah, well, yeah, you're right, it should come on automatically. Are there any other users? Um, you'll have to give Active? me a, you'll have to give, 
you'll have to give me a you'll have to give me a roll for that. A yep, general yep, display spell roll. That's why I'm asking. That's okay. Uh, no, um, there appear to be no no other users logged onto the system at the moment. Logged onto this computer anyway at the moment. Logged onto the main computer. Uh, well, before we go messing with the life support, I'll probably look at the bureaucracy program to see if there's any information on. Okay. What was going on here, or what they were doing, and what could mm -hmm. have gone wrong? Sure. Okay. The bureaucracy program is basically controlling most of the other software yeah. um, in the system, um, as you would expect. Um, it ties into the uh, computer lockout. It ties into the alarm system. It ties into the installation security system. It ties into life support. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it also seems to tie into um, some of the systems on JCR as well. Um, there's uh, references to um, an analysis program uh, and there's references to a drive program um, as well. Uh, in addition to that, the bureaucracy program also seems to have ties into a damage control program somewhere, a maintenance program, and a robot management program somewhere. Hmm. And is this usual? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's a master, it, the bureaucracy works as a master control program um, for everything. Um, for example, it's the bureaucracy program that's telling the life support program to keep the temperature where it is. Yeah. Because the bureaucracy program's getting information back to say that, you know, at this day, as far as you can tell, this is, you know, if, if you wanted to do a, any, a further in-depth analysis, there may be other information, but this is the surface information mm. I'm giving you at the moment. Okay? Yep. Interesting. Uh, and can she access that analysis program from here, or...? Just that there's a link to it. No, you can't. There's dark, there's, there are, there's, I mean, it's like a, it's like a syslog server taking the logs and yeah. then acting and then and then running its own software over the logs to, to make decisions and sending sending commands out to to other other pieces of software in the network. Yeah. Um. So yeah, but the analysis, the, the again, a quick look at the analysis data, the logs. It seems to be. Um, um, uh, something to do with the refining. Mm -hmm. So analysis about the about the refining ref, ref, stuff that's being refined. Yeah. And there's no clues and all this data in the system. What happened to break the ship apart or anything like that? Not break. Well, sorry, break the ship apart. You mean what's happening on the platform? What happened in the the room that was uh, venting. No, yeah, there's nothing that you can see from this one. Um, uh, if you give me another display info role, because that's going a bit, a little bit further into the information you're after. Mm -hmm. um, there is reference coming from the robot management program, wherever that is, that. Um, the external maintenance robot is going about its uh, going about its business um, as per um, its orders. What those orders are is not listed. Yeah. Um, mm. The robot management program would probably have those orders, but there's no there's nothing in the logs apart from everything's nominal. Yeah. And we haven't found the robot management program yet, have we? No. No, you haven't. Okey -dokey. Although, again, your general knowledge of computer architecture and things like that, the logical place for the robot management software to be would be on the maintenance computer. Yeah, which we can't get to at the moment. At the moment, no. Cool, cool. Uh, I think that was all the juicy bits for that one, I believe. Uh, well, just just because you say the software is computer lockout, computer security, bureaucracy, alarm, installation security, and life support. Ah, hadn't checked the alarm. 
Okay. Uh, so let's check that. Let's see. Um. The alarm software uh, receives status data from all the program systems on the platform, as you'd expect, via the bureaucracy program. Um, and there is, as from what you can see here, there is nothing under alarm at the moment. So there's no alarms going off anywhere. Yeah. Um, again, everything seems to be A-OK -okay in terms of no alarms going off yeah. and considering you can't hear any alarms and there are no um there are no um um uh, nothing in the logs nothing in the immediate logs there was um an alarm about um the uh, airlock uh into uh the bc airlock door being uh not being not being able to be closed but that was cleared a couple of hours ago yeah Okie dokie. So the alarm system seems to be working okay. Well, yeah. Seems to be. A lot of the place seems to be working okay. A lot of it doesn't. So it's a bit funny. Uh, Cat will go over to number two then. Number two. Terminal two. Terminal two. Give me a second. Terminal two. Terminal two. Terminal two allows access to two computer systems. Mm -hmm. uh, the JCR and the JGL. CR was the common. No. Oh. CR was... Chemical refining. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. The, G G the GL was the common. Yeah. For general. Uh, should, um, jump, should jump into JCR then. All right. It, uh, it's, got a it's got a computer security on it too, mate. It's got yeah. a computer security too as well. Though. So when you want to try the password or not, that's up to you. If you've yeah, got the password. try the password. Uh, where is it? Um, it works fine, and you're in. Cool. Um, apart from the computer security software itself, it's got an, 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 an which is at level two. It's got a level three analysis program, a level four drive program, and a level four processing program. A drive program? Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, she'll have a look at that. Uh, sure. Um... Okay, it's, yep, it's actually a modified drive program. Mm -hmm. um, it's not not controlling um, uh, engines. It's controlling the atomic reactors, which are keeping, heating the gas to keep the Jetson platform buoyant. Um, it also controls the vents, which equalize the buoyancy. Yep. Um, so it's a, it's a modified drive program, but that's what it is. And there's no reason, there's no, that's, that's all functioning pretty well? Well, you're not changing altitude, so yeah, as far as you're aware. All right. I mean, the, I mean, the information, the information says you're, you're at a certain altitude above the core of the, of, uh, the, the planet and it hasn't changed and there's nothing in the logs to say it's changing. Uh, she'll have a peek at the analysis program then, see what was going on here, and see whether there could have been an explosion or some sort. Okay, the analysis program is, is what's feeding the drive program as, as far as altitude, um, location, uh, things like that. It, it takes information from various sensors, mm -hmm. um, external conditions, wind speeds, all that type of stuff. Uh, yeah. uh, and, cal and calculates any necessary adjustments to maintain the stability of the platform. Gotcha. Um, and also the biochemical extraction process is also being analysed. It's doing both. Mm -hmm. um, and then it feeds that information into the, well, it feeds the um, location data into the drive program to control the drive program. Mm -hmm. um, and it feeds other analysis data back to the main bureaucracy program on, on um, JMN. Does that make sense? Yep, makes sense. Um, so yeah. 
uh, and it and it, it takes obviously information. The analysis program is obviously taking information uh, from the processing program, which you would expect. Yeah, and it takes obviously it also takes feedback from the drive program as well. You know, it's a two way. Yeah. Um, thing. All right, and there was a third program on there. Yeah, that's the processing program. Yeah, and that's pretty. That's pretty common for this kind of thing. Oh, uh, uh, well, yeah. I mean, are you looking at it or? Yeah, I should have a look at it. Uh, where are we? I lost it. Yeah, it, yeah. The processing program controls the distillation column, um, which obviously is getting the biochems from Venturi's atmosphere. Yeah. And yeah. No worries, Jess. There's been no malfunctions with that. Not that's been reported. Okie dokie. Uh, just give me a split second. I've just got to cross reference something. Um, now. Oh, sorry, there was an alarm. Well, yeah, um, I thought there was one. Um, workstation one, by the way, uh, just, so just to fill you in completely, mm. um, it's the computer terminal. Um, no, hang on, what station? Hang on, hang on, sorry. Yeah, what station one? Um, hang on, what am I doing here? Sorry. Hey, hey, hey. So workstation one contains terminal two, yeah? Yeah. And a large panel of gauges and indicator lights showing the conditions of the reactors, the biochem still, and the buoyancy bags. All the gauges and lights are shown green, except for one flashing red light labeled warning, cryogenic collection tanks full. Uh-huh. That's what, so that's what that. That's workstation one. Workstation two, uh, it's a, it, it, it didn't complain. It wasn't a terminal. It was just a workstation. So you've got a bit of a freebie there, but that's all right. Uh, it's a large monitor screen which shows the view from any one of a number of externally mounted cameras. Uh huh. Uh, below the screen is a series is an on a series of on-off switches, camera selectors, contrast, and magnifying controls. Right? They're mm -hmm. not. But there's no terminal there, so uh, you got a freebie out of me. <laughs> So yeah, gotcha. And workstation three. Hang on. Ah, oh, son of a bitch! I hate when they do that to me. Stupid bloody things. All right, I have given you guys some really bad advice. Oh. Okay, um, the map isn't wrong. I just I just read things, read something wrong. So I so said there's three terminal, there's three ter there's three workstations, only one of which has a terminal in it, which is terminal two. Okay. Uh huh. That's okay. We have a selective memory. Good. Uh, uh, workstation three, which you haven't visited yet, which I'm assuming you're about to. Workstation three. It's not listed. It's not. It's not. It's just one of the workstations on the system. Okay. Yeah. It's not. Actually, it's not actually labelled. So uh, th that number two, yeah, it's terminal two, which is in workstation one. <sighs> Pain in the butt. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So workstation two is not labelled, and workstation three is not labelled, but are, but all three workstations are in echo, are in echo one. Okay. Uh huh. Workstation three is the rate the subspace radio communication equipment. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Um. There are two indicator lights on the workstation, glowing red. Mm -hmm. um, the two lights are labelled warning antenna inoperative. And the second one is warning communication program fault. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. I'm, I, 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 when we finish this, I'll show you what I'm working with and you'll see why I made the mistake. 
Now to be clear, we so retconning this, we haven't interacted with the CR computer or the main um, computer. Hang on, hang on. I've got to work at uh, terminal. So terminal, terminal two was the CR computer. Okay. Right. Yep. So we've yes. done that. Yep. So you haven't done, so you haven't done the MN one, the JMN yet. Gotcha. Right. But when you find terminal one or some other way into the JMN, um, yep. <coughs> pardon me, um, I'll we'll, we'll, we'll retcon the retcon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, so cool. yeah. that's that's what's in the room there. So yeah. It'd be easier if they'd labelled these workstations A, B, and C, but they didn't do that, did they? Or I, 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 and I, 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 but they didn't do that, did they? And when you say workstation, you mean just a console, not really a computer console. terminal. Yeah. yeah, console, well, computer terminal for one of them, but console, panels, lights, switches, in one case, keyboard. Okay, okay, so we've we've interacted with the CR terminal, we've looked at the the communications work to work thingy. Well, yeah, you haven't tried to operate the radios yet, but um, um, but as I said, there's two warning lights on the system. That says it's pretty toast. Yeah. Well, apparently there's something wrong with the antenna. Yeah. And that's probably that, that's probably leading to the second one, which is communications inoperable. Probably yeah. because there's no antenna. Yeah. Or something wrong with the antenna. Gotcha. And gotcha. there's no there's no real interacting with that system more than that like oh you can make a radio i mean yeah there's the radio controls are here you could tr tr fire up the subspace radio and try and put a message out but yeah. you know yeah that would probably that would go via the communication software yeah. on jgl yeah. so there's a it's but it's not a, it's not a full it's not a full terminal that you yeah. can do your stuff with it's, it's just a link yeah gotcha okay uh, we should <coughs> probably go over to the other workstation then. Uh, which was what? Uh, I don't know. You said there were two workstations and a terminal in that room. Well, it's three. Well, technically, there's three workstations, and terminal two is at workstation one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know. Pain in the butt. I know. So, but you've already been at terminal. You've already been at workstation one, terminal two, and yeah. gotten the information about the analysis drive and processing. Software. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So there's only two things. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yep. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a pain in the butt. Trust me. <laughs> good, good. Just trying to adjust my brain. Uh, yeah, that's no, alright. I'm trying to do the same thing at the same time. Well, I'll tell people that the radio is busted and uh, uh, explain that. Uh, so, so that means. <laughs> I've got things in my head that I don't know whether it should be in there. The alarm <laughs> that the cryo tanks are full, that's something we don't have. Uh, no, that's something you do have. Okay, that, that came from the CR terminal. Okay. That came from the CR terminal. Gotcha, cool. Well, I will relay that information because that seems pretty important. Do we know what will happen if the, that isn't cleared? Uh, um, is it well, a bad a thing or is it just not collecting stuff? Um. Well, who knows in the current state of things. Normally, um, especially if you give me an engineering role, which I know you've got. Uh, which engineering? Uh, general. Uh, um, chemi no, chemical. Chemistry. Oh, that's a lot. Uh, engineering, yeah, that one. Um, yeah, okay. Um, or, or, or a general, a general logic role because of engineering. Anyway, the bottom line is, um, normally, um, if it's a catalyst tower, it would be forming, um, it would be forming, um, it would be uh, distilling the, distilling whatever the, whatever you want to distill, um, into a holding tank, and the holding tanks would then be put into transport canisters. Once the transport canisters were full and not replaced, for example, the holding tank would eventually fill up. Once the holding tank would fill up, the system would normally stop catalyzing, stop yeah. uh, refining stuff. That's what would normally happen, and that, that's all, that type of thing is all controlled by software and computers. Mm -hmm. Which are probably what, broken. Which, well, there doesn't seem to be anything. I mean, all that's controlled by the CR computer. 
and everything you're seeing from the CR computer seems to be okay at the moment. Having said that, you've only given a, a, a cursory once over. If you want to actually get in there and an analyze the software, that would take a lot longer and obviously yeah. Yeah. more roles. But from a, a cursory glance, there's, it's, everything seems to be a-okay. -OK. That's the same with like the life support too, right? Well, you don't have, you haven't hit the life, the only life support you've looked at so far is the backup life support system, but yes. Oh yeah, that's right, 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 Con and yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, from, in terms happened. of, the, it never happened. In terms of the, in terms of the backup life support system, which was from Terminal 4, back in uh, Charlie block, Charlie module, I think it was Charlie module, yeah. Um, it, it, it seemed to be a, a okay, could, but again, you haven't done an in-depth, an in-depth analysis. Um, ben, in real life, can tell you that an analy analyzing software takes a couple of hours at least, um, if you've got the source code. Which well, yeah, you, you got to go over line after line of code. It's just mm -hmm. a lot of reading. Exactly. But I mean, it's not something you do in a couple of minutes. It's something you do in a couple of hours. In game terms, it's a programming role, which can take anywhere from one to ten hours. If it's yeah. successful, um, that's that's the game mechanic way of analysing the software. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, from a hardware point of view, it's a um, it's a computer um, 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 a repair role, effectively. Again, and that can take several hours uh, from a hardware point of view. So yeah, so that's what you're looking at in terms of time wise. So you've, you've, you've given it, as I said, a, a preliminary look-see, and the preliminary look-see tells you everything's okay with the CR, with the software running on the CR computer, the JCR computer. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I guess we're opening up other doors. Mm -hmm, if you wish. Uh, uh, did we find anything off of... Or just Reese, find anything off of that robot? Um, I might have missed it. Yeah, no, I didn't actually get to that. Um, what were the roles? Hang on, let me scroll back up the chat box until I find them. No, you haven't done it yet. Um, you, you, you've got, uh, Therese has got past the security. So you want to give me those roles, Ryan? List functions, list, 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 list yep. mission, things like that? Start with list mission, mate, it's easier. Well, it's which one you wait one you start with. Uh, well, there's alter mission. No, sorry, no, it's, it is. It's list function. It's the same. It's the same one, Therese. My fault. Um, it's it was the maintenance robot, wasn't it? Yep, fix it. Fix it. Yeah. Um, generally, um, from what you can see, um, its mission is to uh, provide any maintenance required, either verbally from station staff or obviously from the robot maintenance program wherever that is um it does general maintenance around the, it j does general maintenance around the place it seems to be a-okay -okay from a cursory a cursory look of things uh well we'll just uh keep you shut down for time being until we can go to find the robot management program mm-hmm I can't think of anything else to do with it. I mean, I you could well, he could look at it more extensively, but that's going to take time, and I don't know if we want to do that or if we want to keep pressing on. Well, the way you've been act, the way the group's been active, it's been a pretty much a, a, an initial recon of the station and leaving anything that's going to take a while, a couple of hours or more, to phase two, if you want to call it that. Yeah, that's what I figured. It would take a couple hours, so just keep moving. Sure. Because the stuff the cat's doing is only taking a few minutes each one, you know, five, ten minutes each one, max. Um, and obviously, with people are looking over the cat's shoulder when, when they're not doing other stuff and things like that. So where do you want to go to? You've got two other doors. Um, you've got two other doors. May as well go to the southern one. The southern one? Sure. Okay. So, uh, this room 
contains a chair, a computer terminal, um, and a panel set in the wall. Labeled that. Plus, two other panel, two other panels. The first one labeled that, and the second one labeled that. Nice. Uh, so so the, yeah. the grayed out the grayed out area is the where the where the the um, JLS panel cover is. The others are further down the room. Okay. Cool. And if I look at number four. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, two other things. There's also a food dispenser and a power socket for recharging things. Oh, uh, cool. Uh, if I look at number four, is that uh, the main computer? Uh, no. Oh. Uh, terminal four is not the main computer. Um, are you are you going to try and operate yeah. terminal four? Okay. Um, it's whatever, whatever, it, whichever one it is. It's got a computer security software on it. Um, it appears to be JLS. Yep. All right, I'll put in the JLS password. Uh huh. Uh, incorrect password. Please try again. Nice. Uh. I'll put in the password for main and just see. Incorrect password. Please try again. All right. We'll do it the hard way. Okay. Uh, yes, you mentioned bypass the security. Uh, it, was a it was a level two security program. Contains the level two security program and a life support one software. Um, which is obviously the backup life support system. Yeah, okay, gotcha. So you've been here before. Yeah. But not by this route. Yeah. Can I can I find the other the other end of that tunnel that we found from six? Um yeah, it appears to be pointing to this terminal. And there's no hints of whether it was set up from here or number six or uh, it, it? Appears, it, it appears. Well, it appears to be connected. It appears to be a a permanent connection, a permanent VPN connection, for want of a better term. That's weird, right? Um, it's unusual. I mean, the question is, why wouldn't why wouldn't Terminal Six pump straight into the straight into the JLS directly? But it doesn't. It goes mm. in through Terminal Four first. So it's. I wouldn't call it typical, but it, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. It's All inefficient. Right. Yeah. It's inefficient. Um, considering that everything, it, considering that most of the terminals, terminals connect, all the, all the terminals you found so far connect directly into the, into the computer. This is the only one that connects into a terminal first. Yeah. Uh, and if I press the food button, do I get fish? No, nope, you get nothing. Oh no. Okay. Probably because the backup one is still offline. Okay. Hopefully. Uh, cool. All right. I will relay this information and say we probably found enough here in the recon and move on to the next room. Sure. Not an issue. Uh, is it cold enough in here that we really need to sort this temperature out before we start sleeping? Uh, well, it's minus 10 degrees centigrade. I mean, you can sleep in minus 10 degrees centigrade if you 
a masochist. <laughs> yeah. Um, you'd have to sleep in the chill suits. Yeah. Um, but so they're yeah. not consuming power. The chill suits, not at this stage. Not at not at minus ten. Yeah. Cool. No, not at minus ten. Um, but if it went to if it if it went lower than that during the inverted commas night, and you started yeah you used up all the power. The fact that you were cold would wake you up before you before you died. Yeah. Uh, if that's what your worry is, um, which isn't a bad worry to have, to be honest. So this room, it's plain and empty except for a chair, a computer terminal, terminal one, um, and two stark white cabinets whose access panels are labelled as follows. So, retconning the retconning of Terminal 1. <laughs> yeah. So now we have that information. Now you have that information. Gotcha. And I don't know if you can tell. Hang on. I don't think I've drawn it in properly. There's an actual door at the end of that. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. All right. I guess we'd be going to the other door. Okay. Getting close to being paranoid to uh, having to close it real quick. Um, there are two airlock doors in this antechamber. Mm-hmm. Um... Um, 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 hang on a sec. Yeah, that's that one. Um, the um, the hatch to the left has a large warning sign on it. Radiation hazards in suits only beyond inner hatch. Nice. That's uh, that door? No, uh, no, the one to the left. Oh, okay. the hatch to the left. Hatch. Um, the telltale on the panel beside is reading the same as it always has: temperature minus ten, oxygen standard, radiation zero. Cloak will start suiting up. In what? And his in suit. Oh, okay. Uh, the the uh, the other hatch uh, is reading the same minus ten oxygen standard radiation zero, um, but it doesn't say anything. It, it, there's no other thing, nothing else on the door. All right. Should we open up the the non radiation door just to complete the recon and then let Vogue do his thing, or do yeah. we? Do you, are you keen to go into the center? Let, let's uh let's finish our circle and then. I think the circle ends in. Yeah, I think the circle a ends hole, in this. But but we we need to. <laughs> we, we, we we need to at least make sure of that. Okay. So you're going through the non-radiation door, is that right? Yeah, correct. Okay. Give me a second. Just for anything. Okay. The telltale on that door is reading temperature minus 120, oxygen nil, radiation nil. Gotcha. So that's the that's the door that we don't want to open. Okay. Yep. Let's well, not, not go that not way. Without, not without some more, uh, some better protection like, you know, oxygen masks and yep. turning, up your, turning up your chill suit and things like that. Yeah. Uh, but there was a there was a big there was a big draft or something wasn't there? Like yeah, was there, well, there was, over there was here some... there was over hang on sorry. Oh yeah, over here there was a big draft. Yeah. Uh, 
yeah, you beat me to it. Um, but whether that whether that's connected to down here or not, it's another question. Oh yeah, true. And we closed that door, so yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so maybe what maybe cat's uh, not really the right person for it, but maybe a person who knows how to repair things uh, could power up their suit and jump in there with their oxygen. Because the airlock should be pretty protecting there. Yeah. I can repair uh, things if they're leaking. Yeah. Yeah, if Babu could hold a rope, yeah. Babu go with, you Babu. take an oxygen mask, or he takes an oxygen mask, you both uh, press, like, button two on your chill suits, and you just hold a rope around Cerise to anchor him, her, and she'll check it out. Right, okay. Okay, um, so uh, who's staying in the airlock? Who is retreating to um, module Echo? And who is advancing into module, well, you assume it's module uh, Foxtrot. Uh, I think uh, Cat will be back in E. Yeah, in Echo. Yep. More people could go with, uh, Voke will suit up into his chill suit again. Or, well, uh -huh. out of his in, in suit. In suit, yeah. yeah. Uh, and he'll go with, because the external maintenance bot might be there. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll, I'll I'll join them. Okay, so uh, my question is, what are you putting your what are you what are you turning your suits up to? Button two. To Button comfy two. level. Comfy level. Um, I got to find it. Where is it? There it is. Uh, two two SU per hour. Okay. Um, and you're not there, cat. You've retreated. Uh... I guess if everybody's going and there's room, uh, we may oh, as well not. Yeah, we you can all switch in. Yeah, we may so, as well not split the party. I don't mind if you do. I'm just saying I'm just, I need to know where everybody is. That's all. Yeah, no, no, I'll go where everybody is. All right. Okay. So um, that's everybody. Everybody's in the airlock and everybody's uh, going to be there when, they, when you open up the, the door into what you suspect is um, the uh, Foxtrot module. Yeah. Yes? Okay. And everybody yeah. dies. And then everybody dies. TPK. Okay. Okay. Um, where are we? You have died of dysentery. You have died of dysentery? <laughs> did you ever actually play that? No. <laughs> I did. It's actually, it wasn't, I mean, continuing with 1980s, yeah. it wasn't a bad game, but. You, I mean, you know, talk about die of dysentery, die, but you bloody died of everything on that damn thing. Oregon, uh, Oregon Trail is the game we're talking about, by the way, guys, <laughs> for those who don't recognise it. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, from here, you can see that all this area up this, damn it, all this area up this way um, has been uh, exposed to Venturi, Venturi's, Venturi's atmosphere. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, which is probably why it's so bloody cold and no oxygen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, for those of you with engineering or technician skills, I'll give you a quick spot check. Okay, Vo, come over to the... Private room for a quick second, will you please? User left your channel. Channel switched. Okay. Um, you can, you pr you think, although you're pretty sure, but you think that a lot of the damage, it's not impact damage. It's like it's been cut away. Now that certainly could be the case if something did collide. You'd cut away the damaged parts and stuff. But it's it's it doesn't look like impact damage. It looks like it's been um, cut away. Kind of like okay. with a metal saw? With a oxy, oxy settling, something like that. Yeah, okay. 
Okay. User left your channel. Channel switched. Um, so that is that obviously that is exposed to Venturi's atmosphere. Um, now the other thing, the other thing, uh, and there's a bit of you, you can feel a bit of wind buffer. Uh, now, by the way, you're, you still haven't actually exited the airlock yet. You can, just the doors open. The other thing is that moving around that damage area somewhat is a two meter long horizontal cylindrical body robot which tapers to a point at both ends, a bit like a cigar. Um, it's uh, got legs, and the legs seem to be, um, you, you'd estimate, or you'd, uh, uh, Cerise in particular would say that the legs may even be magnetic because the, the robot is rock steady, and yet the winds are quite, even from here, the winds are quite buffeting. Um, it's... Um, it moves a couple of paces along the rim of the, the damage there and begins to cut away some of the flooring uh, with a uh, LAS cutter. Now, okay. Uh, do you want to go into that room? As in, does it look like it's cutting away things that it needs to repair or cutting away things for the sake of cutting away things? It's hard to tell. I mean, if if this was, imp I mean, if you have impact damage, for example, um, you cut away the damaged parts to make repairs easier. That could be what's going on, but, and in, cons in, cons in consultation with Vogue, um, there doesn't appear to be any impact damage. It all, it appears to be all cut away. So whether the impact damage, if there was any, has all been cut away and the robot's just finishing up, or whether the robot's actually physically damaging the station, it's hard to tell. Gotcha. But where it's working at the moment doesn't seem to be damaged at all. Is, is that a door on the right-hand side? Uh, on the right hand side, what that one? No, that's a uh, a, a, a cabinet. Oh, okay. Hmm. I think. Sorry. Yeah, I, I I just I just realised why you why you asked that question. Is that better? Yeah. So again, you, this, you see, this is all from the airlock doorway. I, I think we do need to go in. Not too far. And maybe we should tie Not a rope to each other. Yeah, so I think we need to just shoot that robot. We might need That's because you don't like robots. <laughs> it's just that. Robots haven't been, for the most part, friendly since we've arrived here. That's because you attacked them. Yeah, but an external maintenance robot is going to be something that we need for fixing the station. And we haven't found the robot control program yet, so maybe before engaging or pissing it off, it would be good to find that. Um, is, like... The way that the robot is positioned out there, is it possible to actually get to it, to deactivate it? Uh, it's possible. It'd be... I mean, yeah, it'd I be dangerous. Like die. Well, it'd be dangerous. And then the robot might deactivate and just fall. Um, possibly not. Um, it's got a pretty good grip on things in terms of its legs. Um, if you were to disengage its power back, its, its power battery, then if it was if it was magnetically, if it was magnetic induction pads holding it to the station, they would obviously be powered down, and then it would could be swept away by the wind. The wind is strong enough to do it, from what you know of the atmosphere of Ventry. Well, the concern is that it's cutting away stuff. Um... And it looks like it might be causing damage rather yeah. than fixing damage. And if we just let it keep going, it, it'll just keep going. Um, Eventually, yeah. But I mean, 
it's it's not i mean let's face it welding is um, cutting things apart welds wise is not the fastest thing to do i think oh, if right, we can right. find the go ahead no but um and then i was thinking about just re re leaving it be because if we try to go and deactivate it it sounds pretty dangerous to go out that far you know we can get swept away um and then even if we do successfully deactivate it it sounds like it depending on how it's anchored to the to the platform it might get swept away well, well as i said if you were to just deactivate it it'd be probably be, it'd, it'd be you're pretty sure it'd be okay if you were to actually pull its power back its, its power battery then yeah it it would no longer be anchored to the station in any way and therefore could be swept away okay, now just, so the just, concern just, is whether just or not we'll die. yeah at this stage is whether or not you would die just remember this is like a hot air balloon floating in the atmosphere and kept at its altitude by the drive program which you discovered a while ago um, by the atomic reactors heating heating up gas in the gas bags and um, venting gas to maintain the correct altitude. Wow. So apart from that, though, it's being buffeted, buffeted by venturized winds. Um, and it just, yeah, there's nothing keeping it. The only, it's stabilized in terms of the Z axis. In terms of the X Y axis, it blows as it blows around the blows around the planet as as at the winds. The winds of the winds. <laughs> okay. So the only constant is the altitude. Yeah, I I don't think it can do a lot more damp. I, I mean, if we go to the maintenance, if we find the robot control program, we can just tell it to stop. Hopefully. Otherwise... But you know that'll be ten minutes later. It's not going to do that much damage in ten minutes. Yeah, I'm assuming you find the, the find the maintenance pro the yeah, program in like ten minutes. If we don't find it or we can't get the program to work, uh, then we can go out and we can try to manually deactivate it. I suppose while we're vacillating on exactly the best approach, there's this appears to be another door there. That's to yeah, the that's reactor. Right. That's the one with the the. Uh, that's the one with the um, um, radiation. Uh, radiation hazard in suits only beyond the inner hatch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm. I'll volunteer to go in there. <laughs> Without an in suit. How many in suits do you have? I have one. If it's in an engineer kit, if anyone else has an engineer kit, oh, that means Cat would have one too. Okay, then you have one as well. Which is probably good if there are computers down there. So yeah, I'll suit up. Yep. And another possibility is if one wanted to prevent people from going into an area, a radiation warning is probably a very effective way of keeping them out. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, that just for or, do, or am I just claiming, or am I just claiming I didn't think about that and actually have thought about it and trying to throw you off the track? <laughs> but I love the double think. But we also definitely know that there's a nuclear reactor on this station, right? Oh yeah, that, that's how the drive is programmed. So it's not entirely surprising that there would be a a radiated area of the station. Yeah, and we've kind of explored every nook and cranny except you know the part that's damaged so this is it uh to, to put this suit on Hang can on. it go over um, the cold suit yeah no problem at all cool the cold the cold suits basically um the cold suit can go under anything it's, it's yeah. basically a set of skivvies effectively gotcha. powered skivvies but skivvies nevertheless um, or for those of you in that way inclined, uh, Daymar thermals, um, which are really, really good in cold weather, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Hey, nice one, Jez. Yep, Vocal has his have his Totsy Rad gauge out. Hang on a sec, I just gotta find something. One, two, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, it's gotta be seven. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's got to be Terminal Seven. Sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm just trying to. It's not labelled very well. What I'm looking for, and I just found what I was looking for. So yes. Anyway, um, so what's the general plan? Um, you're going to go into, you're going to suit up, Jazz and sorry, uh, Voke and Cat, and go into uh, through this airlock door, are you? Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, well, it's gone four hours. Do you want to – that actually is a good place to leave it for the week. Yeah. Is that okay to everybody, or we want to mm -hmm. continue on? Sounds good. Yep, no, that's good. All right. Yep. Well, in that case, guys, thanks for playing. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, we'll see everybody in two weeks' time, barring any accidents. Um, but uh, until then, we'll see you then. You can get those credits rolling, please, um, Ryan. And uh, we'll see everybody in two weeks' time. Well, that's it for this session. We hope you've enjoyed the game as much as we did. We'd like to thank Smiteworks, Sirenscape and Twitch, and of course, all the fantastic people involved with the Star Frontiers RPG over the years. I'm Dulux Oz, and on behalf of the entire gaming group, we'd like to say thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time. Until then, may your God go with you. <laughs>